and uh, we'll be starting the actual campaign in just a second. Everybody level up to level six, and we are in a campsite right now. So that's what's up. <laughs> just give me the. <laughs> All right, Adam, you ready? I am ready. Yes. Perfect. Everybody else ready? Yeah. Yep. I thought. Yeah. Okay. So yes. um, let's start with a recap again. I'm gonna have one of you guys do the recap so I can see how well you've been paying attention for the past I week. I've not been paying attention, but I'm trying. Yeah. With our with our quarantining, I want to see where your minds are at. So um, let's let's have somebody other than Adam do it. Ah, oh, fuck you. I don't want you to do it. You did it last week. So somebody else okay. give us a quick synopsis Fine. of what happened, and I'll fill in gaps. All right, I'll, I'll do it. Uh, so we came up to this <laughs> Yell Yark, uh, your goblin you're camp. Through, you're half, you're you halfway, through the session. You're halfway through the session already. Oh, God. Okay. Well, you, start, you started off back in the tavern. Yes. How about I'm here? I'll do it. Okay. Right, you go and we'll do it. <laughs> Thank you. So everybody was up in the rooms except for a couple of us. A couple of us. Uh, some little, well, what's his name? Hugh Hackenstone. Hugh hopped off in a little hideout spot in the in the basement of this tavern. He's a hack. Told up me to bring boy. everybody with him and make an escape and get out of the city before everybody's killed by what's his name that we killed yeah, his brother. I don't know his name yet, but he's bad. Anyways, so we go down. Uh, he says that we might have to fight our way through, which we attempt to do. I think I tell everybody that not to use any lights, but then I go and <laughs> make this ultra chord of explosion with my musical instrument that rings through the entire sewer. And uh, so we do a little fighting, and then we kill like three. <clears throat> Are they goblins or undead? Ghouls. 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 We kill my three ghouls and then um, make our escape to the end of the... Escape? Escape. Escape. Ex escape. Escape. Wakanda forever. Escape. <laughs> uh, we end up in pretty much a, like, uh, giant shit pile of just flesh and yep. shit. Refuse pit. Yeah. Uh, Shavas decides he's going to start chewing and fucking rotting flesh <laughs> while we all try to get in combat. Uh, we make it out and we get... go to Hughes' camp. We go to Hughes' camp. And... Find a couple supplies. Find some Sap dripping off a tree, it's a good bug repellent. Yes. That will be important. Um we head down the river. We head down the river. Mm -hmm. Find a temple. Crocodile on a man's back. That's right. We got go ones with ant faces. Not yet. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. We saw him across the river. You did, excuse and me. We got there. We learned about an ancient uh uh, it wasn't a real chapter, wow. more of a, just a... Like a folklore. Folk, yeah, folklore. Thank you. Of something about a man helping an alligator, or an alligator helping a man uh, get across the river. And... Don't really remember the name of the story. Blah, blah, blah. We got a cool magic jug. <laughs> you did get you a jug from the table. There's some interesting uh, things to get through this tomb. That involved like staying on people's shoulders and shit to mm -hmm. the or to show the alligator and the man mm -hmm. coalescing. Yep. Uh, we find get the jug. Uh, I believe Shabas had that jug. Cat. <laughs> and then I don't know exactly the magical properties of it. I remember it did something. Alchemy jug. Alchemy jug. Thank you. And then we leave. And it's literally free money. Jug gets stolen. Jug gets stolen. Oh. Yeah. Oh, we missed, uh... The chicken? Um, or the flying yeah, monkey? Yeah, turning the flying monkey now. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. So, that happens. <clears throat> and then... What did the plan? 
got to the goblin camp and Adam did a good impersonation of the uh, goblin queen. Ended That's up right. uh, having the guards stab her right in the throat. And, uh, but it was not before. Through the road. What yeah, it was not before she sum- or not summoned, but alerted. Bellowed. Yeah, mm-hmm. alerted the giant T Rex. We then waited until the T Rex. It's right on the camp. Right, yeah, right on the camp, and then we did the firing mechanism that was supposed to be designed for not the 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 camp. Or not the people at the camp, but pretty much lift them all out of the, the place. Camp. Yeah. Trebucheted them out into the forest. Trebucheted them out, and then we're standing there. I think we we camp shortly after that. Good. Yep. Thank you. That was very good. That was horrible. Sorry. That was awesome. No, you're great. Um, so that was the whole session there. Uh, all of you ranked up or leveled up to six. Uh, you are starting out in the same Yaliark camp. Uh, just minus the camp. Um, so you all just woke up from a long rest, and let's go. Clicking the long rest. Okay. Um. So we got our jug back. We're we're all good. We're happy. So uh, about the jugs. Adam changed his character a bit based on he and I's discussion. Uh, we're going to negate the jugs. And the jugs no, no longer... Jug. The, they have a jug. They have the one from the temple? Yes. You just got rid of your jug. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so there we go. Adam's jug that he has that now is... That jug, the alchemy jug, is now one of one. Um, so that is still a thing. Uh, just Adam's previous jug is gone. So we can't make mayonnaise and honey? You can only make mayonnaise now. Just on different days, you can make mayonnaise and honey. <laughs> to, oh, speaking of which, if, uh, Adam, do your raven real quick. Get your gold. Oh, uh, hang on just a second. 5d20. Yeah, somebody else do that. Somebody else do uh, stuff, because I'm not ready for that. I'll do that. I'll do that for you. So 5d20 incoming. So let's do. Uh, wow, that's not bad. Uh, so that is. Oh, that didn't roll. That was not an eight. Uh, yeah, Forty-five. Forty-five gold. Yep. Well, oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. So. And I'm sorry, so that and uh, who who's in possession of the alchemy jug right now? I think it was solid. Maybe? Solid. I thought. So, do you want to do anything me, with that before we start up? 25. Um, how much water can make a day again? 10 gallons of fresh. Or 8 gallons of fresh? One of those. All right. Do, Let's go 10. Do, what, what do we want out of this jug today, Pete? Mayonnaise. Oh, Always yeah, mayonnaise. <laughs> no, no. You, pick you pick it. You pick the item in. You, yeah, you pick, you pick what little stopper you pull out, and that's what yeah, it yeah. makes. Yeah. Yeah, I need water to live. Oh, not mayonnaise. If you don't pick what, what was it, five gallons, of, four gallons of mayonnaise, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, why wouldn't we do mayonnaise? <laughs> no. Who wants to carry four <laughs> gallons of mayonnaise? Everybody, hold your hands out. Use your rations for today. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'll pour it right in your mouth. I'll pour it. I don't care, dude. <laughs> um. All right. Well, I'm gonna just. Ask, do you want me to just make water today? With it, or yeah, we, yeah. yeah, I'll I'll say you guys yeah. have water skins on you that you could. Yeah, yeah, all right. I'll let's fill everyone's water skins. We're all good. Okay, so um, let's have everybody make a quick uh, perception check, and I need mm. to know who's the highest and what their role was. Uh, <laughs> Man, let's see if Gideon's paying attention today. Yeah, you started up poor last time. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually got better. <laughs> oh, <laughs> not twenty eight. There we go. That's better. Nice. I got a nine, nine, 22. I got 14. If, if anybody can beat in that 20, then... Well, I'll beat. Let's see. Let's see. Hold on. Beat him with your own nat 20 and then have a higher wisdom. But I ended up being 22. There will be only one winner. I got my own so. I got my own <laughs> Put it in the butt. <laughs> Very nice. (laughs) 
Everybody roll? Yeah. I think so. Adam, you're a little frozen, I believe. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> now you're alive. <laughs> Try to get some music going here in the background. Yeah, Robot looks right, like he's so, uh, if, if nobody beat in that I did not. I got 13. I got 13. So. Okay. <clears throat> so, Gideon, what you will notice when you wake up, rub the crusties out of your eye, uh, is on the ground next to you yeah. is an amulet <laughs> that you will remember was around the neck of the Goblin Queen. Um, during the scuffle of getting the spear jammed up her neck and tossed out into the woods, mm -hmm. must have fallen off. Um, so I'm going to have you inspect that real quick, just a free inspection. And what you notice is it's a kind of an ornate, uh, actually pretty ornate amulet. On the back is uh, a name. And um, that is Vorn, V-O-R-N. Got it. So that means nothing to you right now, but hold on to it. I will do that. So that uh, amulet was very important to the Goblin Queen. Uh, she always kept it on her from what, you know, metagame-wise. Um, and now it is in your possession. So... All right. Hugh's going to uh, gather you all together and suggest that we head further down the river and uh, continue with our day. Long day of traveling ahead. All right, let's do it. So everybody, everybody packing up their stuff? Yeah. Absolutely. Does everybody still have that map that I gave you of the Chult area? Yes. <sighs> Yeah. I can't so, find my copy of it, but yeah, I would assume. Okay. So basically, we're, we're starting out. It's um, in this chat. I'll, if you scroll up, okay. yeah. Well, yeah, no, it not. is. Uh, it might not be in there. No, it it's is. not. We got a new. I'll put another one in. Chat? Yeah, I'll put yeah, because somebody didn't join the last one, and then uh, there you go. All right, so that's that's what you see. Uh, that is Chult. I can't see it. Um, you guys are. On, um, I can't see it. There we go. You guys are on Camp Vengeance, or right near Camp Vengeance. You're going to head further down the river south, uh, kind of southwest. So, all right. You're going to head down the river. Um, he was going to fill you in on a couple things about the area, local wildlife, what to watch out for. He tells you there's a big undead presence here. Um, he actually, I'm not sure if I told you guys how he lost his arm. Did I mention that? Yeah. Uh, it was bitten he, off by a dinosaur. It was bitten off actually by a dragon. Um, oh. He's going to let you know that the, the group is, I think I said, maybe he said dra uh, dinosaur first, but it's definitely a dragon. Um, he fills you in that his arm was taken by a dragon, a local uh, young red dragon named Tinder. Swipe right. And, yeah. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> swipe right. Yeah, he swiped the wrong way on that one. And, um, so he tells you that, uh, further south, um, from what he can hear from everybody else that's in the area is that dragon's still around. Uh, so he says he's gonna try and avoid that area as much as possible, but if he does or if you guys all end up in that area, that's who we'd be looking at, so. Yeah, let's uh, try to avoid it. Let's try and avoid it, yep. Um, so as you are heading down the river, I'm gonna have everybody roll another perception check real quick. I will not do as good. You don't have I got an eight. Okay. 16. Uh, 11. <laughs> yep. Uh, and you also, I, I think, uh, Amanda had him. Man. Oh yeah, we All actually right. get uh, plus three from Amanda's aura as well. Yes. All right, so seventeen. Uh, then nineteen. So eleven. So, so any, any anything above a ten is what I'm looking for. Got it. Or anything, any check we do when we're ten within ten feet of you. Oh. Sorry. Yeah. We're awesome like that. So what you'll see uh, if you roll the ten or above is that uh, further down the river, on top of a giant uh, kind of cliff face. Uh, is what looks like campfire smoke. And uh, Hugh will actually let you know that in this area, um, there was a large group or a large tribe of very adept hunters. Um, and he tells you that uh, they once lived in this area. 
they chose this as their home for defensive reasons and for hunting terra folk. And uh, terra folk are kind of exactly what you think in the fact that it's a pterodactyl folk. Uh, oh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna upload a picture yeah, here. Yeah, a picture. Of a terra folk. Everything in life. Oh, oh sick. Um, There's my next oh, character, boys. Oh, yeah. Pretty cool. Um, so, humanoid guys. Yeah. Built in plague doctor masks. Oh, looks looks really exactly cool. like Ridley from fucking Metroid. I was going to say. I was so, trying to think of the name. So, terra folk, um, terra folk hide wings uh, are all very valuable. The beaks are all very valuable. So that tribe was here hunting them, um, set up camp on that area. Um, Hugh actually suggests that it's, it's not a far distance off. We should probably run up there just to see. Uh, we are low on supplies, and uh, he thinks that they would probably have some good stuff, maybe some possible bartering that we could do, and uh, wants to get your opinions on that. Let's do it. If the guy thinks it's okay, you know, yeah, um, Gideon's fine with following the guide for right now. We don't have any... I mean, as far as he knows, we don't have any better direction to follow at this point. I'm kidding. I am right. totally distracted by the laser pointer. <laughs> Can't stop. I gotta keep him occupied, or he's just gonna sit here at my side and just run. So it's either that or hear a cat, a kitten, run left and right. Um, so Hugh says, let's do that. Uh, as you guys go further down the river, uh, you start to see an opening in the forest, or the uh, jungle, excuse me. I keep doing that. In the jungle where you could probably duck. Um, but before you get them, have everybody roll a dexterity save real quick. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Remember, plus three. Plus three. Plus three. Okay. Mm-hmm. Jesus. That's awesome. Thanks for that. 16, 19. Yeah. So yeah. I got a 19. 18. Save. One sec. Uh, my deck save. I got 10. Plus your three. Yeah. Oh, God. She got a 10. All right. I got 17. Well, the Paladin got a 10. 17 for me. Hey, I got a quick question. <clears throat> do I use my saving throws modifier or do I use my like, regular Same modifiers? Yeah. Same thing. Same thing. Okay. Okay. So 23. 23? Wait. Yeah. I got 22. Well, he is the, he's a monk, yeah. so that makes yeah, sense. True. Turtle monk. Plus your dexterity modifier. He's monstrous. He's uh, my, my body is my house. I need everybody to beat a 12. Okay. Everybody did except like, for uh, Azaria. Yeah. Did, yeah. did anybody not beat a 12? Yeah, I got a 10. <laughs> okay, so everyone besides Amanda, um, what happens is the boat, the canoe that you're in, hits a stump that's underneath the water and it gets handled, uh, starts to take on water. The canoe bucks. Everybody that made the save is dexterous enough to grab onto either vines or something on the shore. Um, and they land on dry water. Uh, dry, dry water. Dry, dry water. water. I love dry water. So Amanda landed in wet water. And um, <laughs> so you, you plunge into the water. Welcome and the water. unfortunately, I'm going to need you to make another um, con save real quick, which shouldn't be terrible. <laughs> and, and Kevin Costner comes out of the water and says, Hey, I'm Robin yeah. Hood. <laughs> I'm the postman. <laughs> you got a letter for you. That's what? What's your constitution? Team. Aren't you famous? Uh, are you? Are you? Well, wait. Are you proficient in constitution? No. Oh. Please. I do. What's your savings throw? He comes out of water and says, "I guess they will come." Yeah. Nice. Good yeah. There we go. There we go. He we're, comes out of water and says, uh, "Will you put your body on me? Because mm-hmm. I'm your bodyguard." If he was a better bodyguard, she'd still be here. Right? Right? Anybody just, exactly. Anybody that's singing right now just fell in the water, too. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Uh, what would you roll? 13. Uh, that works. Okay. Perfect. Uh, you, you had to be at 12. Uh, so you fall in the water. Um, being very constitutional, I guess. I don't know. Um, hardy. Hardy. Um, what would have happened if you would have failed is you would have been infested with throat leeches, um, oh. which would have been bad for you. Um, so you you burst back out of the water, cough. You can feel leech fall from your face. Um, and I'm going to need you to... Somebody can provide a help action or, or help. 
for this because she's gonna make need to make another deck save to get out. Yeah, um, I send I'll, I'll a do tentacles around and wrap around her arms and okay. try to pull her. So, in. so roll again. Roll another deck save with advantage. Me. Yeah. Okay. Just to try and get out of the water. Adam. So you roll two d twenties. <laughs> no. So you just roll a d twenty and then a d twenty. Okay. I did better before. I did two. So you do you take the better of the two. So sixteen plus your what's your dexterity? Right. You're fine. You already beat it. It's fifteen. Yeah, she's already beat it. Alright, good. Yeah. <laughs> so so you're out of the water. <laughs> okay. Uh so good job. You you avoided throat leeches, which is a ter I have to look it up, but it's a terrible fucking thing. Uh you get you get exhaustion, you get like once you get certain I levels of yeah, exhaust certain exhaustion, time. you can get real bad. Um I all right, so you're up. Yeah, throat leech. Yeah. yeah. It was a um, relationship. So you make it out of the water. Uh, everybody's on dry land right now. And um, at the base of this cliff face, uh, you see a carved path into the side. It's a very narrow, probably only five foot wide path. Um, and it's kind of littered with some good sized boulders. So you will have to traverse that path, move the boulders along the way. Uh, Hugh reckons it'll probably take about an hour to get up that path. Um, or you could climb. Uh, if you have any kind of climbing material or anything like that, you could go up and avoid all the boulders and everything. Uh, it's a lot faster, um, and you won't have to make any kind of... How high is it? It's uh, it's about 200 feet. Huh, Jesus Christ. So I'm it's pretty... pretty... Yeah, it's a sheer pretty, face. Pretty uh, sure I'm going to levitate the whole thing? Sheer face. Like North Face, but it's Cousin. Okay. Um, Can you levitate? Like, you can't, like, go... Perpendicular and levitate up things, can you? No. Like, so you're like levitating six inches off the ground and you just like go straight up? I'm gonna say, <laughs> levitate, levitate takes you a specific height and then you can move uh, if you press. I mean, it's like it's like being in zero G. Hold on, let me get it. I'm gonna say so no for push this. Off? I'm gonna vote we don't fucking climb because my strength is five. <laughs> So you can, hey man, at least you, can, you got arms, you fucking idiot. Hey, can you carry me up? Yeah. I might have something that can help okay, us. But... Back. Piggyback me, boy. Yeah, Literally you piggyback, piggyback me. Oh. It depends on the complexity of this climb. There's no way I'm getting up there. <laughs> um. Do, do, do. <laughs> All right. One creature or loose object of your choice uh, that you can see within range raise, rises vertically up 20 feet and remain suspended there for the duration of the spell. The spell can levitate a uh, target that weighs up to 500 pounds and unroll a creature bottle. The target can move only by pushing or pulling against a fixed object or surface within reach, which allows it to move as if it were climbing. Uh, you can change the target's altitude by 20 feet in either direction on each of your turns. Okay, so you can, like, vault off the wall and levitate all the way up. Well, yeah, but you could, you could go up 20 feet, next turn go up another 20 feet, oh, next okay. turn go up another 20, yeah. So and I have a tool for 10 minutes. That, I have a tool that might help us. Yeah. What's your tool? It's, it's called a movable rod. rod. Yeah, it's, it's a rod, rod. Mm. rod that uh, can basically stick on anything and be gravity defined can hold 8,000 pounds of weight. Whoa. All right, well, I'm going to take it and go to the straight to the top. <laughs> <laughs> so, the what, your five strength? The immovable rod, it, 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 uh, it fixes in place whenever you hit the button. Um, yep. It can be in midair, it can be against something, it can be holding something up, but it doesn't, you can't like. Climb, climb, climb. Can't oh, move it. You can't, like, that's that's no. going to be our challenge. Yeah, that's what I wondered if it was like a straight climb or like we. No, it's it's a, it's a stopping in place thing. Um, yeah. Okay. So you you could be free falling, hit it, and it will stop, and you can hang on to it. Um, like will which you, actually, DM, will you allow levitate? Um, roll a d twenty real quick. Okay. Help help me decide. <laughs> All right, I'll do that. That twenty. Are you watching the stream? <laughs> No. Because my rolls are here. They're live. Yeah, I'm watching Adam. I have too many windows open. So I got that right there. You see that? What's that? I don't know. You tell me. It's too unclear. Can you see it? Oh. Nope. I tell can kind of see it. Oh, I'm coming to your stream. Can you zoom in a little bit? It's a 12. Good shit. Yeah, it is a 12. And so my 
what are we using here? Dex? Or no, no, it's just a, no, it's just, just a, a twenty. Literally a d twenty. So I'm, 20, I was twelve. Yeah. Yeah. Ten, ten, ten and above was yes. So yeah, go ahead. Okay. So I'd like to levitate, and every twenty yeah. feet, I'd like to take my mouth, and and just bite. Yeah. The, <laughs> the the surface of the cliff. Yeah. My pig is stuck to me. He's saddled in. So. Sure. I want his like, back. Yeah. No. No. no you're not. <laughs> and so I just want to like take my mouth so, and like vault myself up every twenty feet until I get okay. to the top. Okay, I'm, I'm going to try to be at least a little bit more helpful to the party. Um, I have 50 feet of rope. If somebody can give me three other coils of 50 feet, I can levitate to the top, tie it off, have, and then you guys can climb with it. I have 50 feet of rope, but I don't want to climb. That's I the thing. Have I have rope. five strength. Um, I'm pretty sure. My I need a ride to the top of this cliff. Why do you need a ride? Because I have five strength, I will not be able to. Climb. I can carry up to five hundred pounds with me. So I use brain. <laughs> yeah, same out. thing. I can carry quite a bit. I'll, say, I'll carry. I'll, I'll climb on one of your guys' backs, and you guys carry me. There's a path, you idiots. <laughs> the There's path. a path. Let's take the path. I, no, I said let's take the path. path. It just goes up, and you gotta move. All right, I'm going up the path. Fuck this. I'm going up the yeah, let's go up the path. I'm going up the path. I don't know what you fuckers are planning. <laughs> I think at the top when they come up the path, I'm going to back my pig. So, Some uh, mountaineering. <laughs> I'll go up the path, too. I didn't hear anything about a path. So Adam, and, Adam and Death are at the top. Sure. Um, so everybody that's going up, I'm going to have you make three strength checks real quick. Oh, shit. Individually. Including you people that fucker. didn't go up the path? Nope. Okay. Just, what is it, what is it? Um, All we're doing is streamlining you guys pushing boulders out of the way along the way. I'm just following people pushing the boulders. I'm not making these checks at all. <laughs> I love the 16s. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so you observer. just have to beat a 15 to push the boulder out. Of the way. Okay, so that's one. Um, so I got... Okay, wait. I got 16. So I just need one... It's, it's only five feet wide, so I need so one. So I rolled a 23 on the second one. I need one person take to take hers. Stop it. I need one person to take the lead and push the boulders because it's only five feet wide. So you're not going shoulder to shoulder pushing. Nope. All right, I'll do it. I've already done two rolls. Okay. Right. So, on so a 16, a 23, make... and then Wait, my last don't... roll. Don't. You need to stop. Okay. <laughs> on your last one, I need you to make your strength roll and then roll another d20. And tell me what you got on the last d20. These are ability checks, right? I'll give With him that. one body inspiration. Go ahead. Uh, so what we're doing as we're, as we're going higher the uh, path is actually getting uh, a little thinner um, oh, no. so yeah, you at, have at to, the top yeah. at the top where the last boulder is you're, you're basically shim shimmying on the side of the cliff face you have a d8 bardic inspiration die that you can use on this oh okay nice. so alright so that makes me Plus a D8. They have my plus three on. Yep, I've got that. Okay. So that was a 19. And then on my last one. This is your D20 that's going to decide something. Okay. Um, oh, well, we're, I think we're good. Uh, 16, 6. This is, you don't add any modifiers. 27. You're not adding any modifiers to it. It's literally a okay, 16 year How much? Just straight up D20, roll the 16. Okay, so that's bad. Um, so <laughs> the last... Well, can you add my own personal modifier to it's it? Not a, it's not no, a modifier. it's not a modifier roll. It's literally just a, okay. it's basically a percentage roll you're rolling. Mm. It's a 50-50 okay, shot. Okay, gotcha. This, this roll, high is bad. So what you did is <laughs> on your last roll, you successfully dislodged the boulder. Oof. But everyone below you needs to make a deck save or be knocked off. Shit. You pulled yes. two hearts and actually pulled it towards your party. Oh. God Bing damn it, I rolled a fucking natural 20. And that 20? Did it? Yeah. Work? That's fine. That's good. Wait, Just so jump out of the way. It was my nat 20 for the day, though. 13. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's not math. I got 13. It was still your 3 from. Yeah, you got. And your mods and your plus 3, so. 13. Okay. Um, so who else was there? You know, you everybody else there. Okay. So um, Amanda, you're the only one that failed. Uh, you get knocked <laughs> off. You're gonna, you're gonna you're gonna fall 75 feet. Oh, oh shit! Can I, can I use so, my athletics to, to fuck? Die, to help no. athletics to die. 
You can, um, what I'll allow is I will allow uh, Robot to roll another dex throw to throw his immovable rod down. If you wanted to throw that to you, you can catch it. Um, but other than that, you're going to fall and take some damage. Yeah, While you do that, I'm a... right there, man. Why? Oh, I'm going to pass. <laughs> I'll use my bard against Rage to pass. I'll throw out a tentacle <laughs> that comes out of the cliff that I've uh, cheeking grip. Can't roll to pass. Uh, you can't roll anything. This no, is... I totally will. All right. Um, I don't even know where to look up fall damage. Fall damage is 1d4 like... every 6. All right, so you're going to roll 4. So rather than throw it, why don't I just four. dive after her? You could you could do whatever you want, but she's falling right now, and you have like 3 seconds. Uh, one I see it. Every time. I, roll, That's I rolled another 16. Yep. So I'm going to dive towards her, grab her, and check the rod. Now make a strength check. To hold both of you up, or else your slip grip is going to slip. 18 plus this is 6, 24. Like okay, like you're fine. So, um, you rolled the boulder down. three off of her, too. You rolled the I boulder, I didn't roll the boulder down. It, do, people dodge. It's a man of <coughs> falls. You dive, being the culprit that made her fall, and <laughs> dive after her, grab an arm around, and pop your immovable rod. Uh, your grip holds. <laughs> And you are hanging there mid space about thirty five feet Look off the ground. Go, man. He's nice. He's good he's good at DMing. Adam, you're muted. I know I am. Okay. <laughs> All right. Because I'm talking to stream. Uh gotcha, sorry. Rope, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they are hanging there mid space, thirty five feet off the ground. You guys right, can back to the... Um well they're a hundred and 25 feet or whatever for me, That's so I, my rope's only 50 foot long. I can't really do anything for them. Um, I could love it. I, I'm, 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 how much time's passed? So I uh, I could... I can fix this. Yeah. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to... Uh, hang on, let me make sure this works. Features. Monk has slow fall. Oh. Yep. And I am going with, to. Okay, I'll let you do it. it. Hey. So we're 35 feet above the ground. Yep. I uh, press the button. It dislodges. Yep. I will. I'll basically use slow fall. Yep. Use one. Uh, I think it's key point. No, I don't have to use that for this. I'll use my reaction when you fall to reduce okay. any fall damage by 30. Oh, so cool. I put her on in front of me, and I turn my back to the ground. So you would brace. You would. You would negate any damage. Fucking anyway, brace for so. impact. Yeah. So I'll let you fall without damage. Turtle in a half shell. Boom. Land on the ground. <laughs> turtle power. Turtle power. So I got you, April. Yeah. <laughs> she owes you a pizza. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, uh, all right, so I will let you guys, uh, great success. I'm going to have you guys just head up the path again. Great uh, success. Great success. Great success. <laughs> so um, when you guys get to the top, uh, who was already up there? It was uh, Death and Adam. So um, Adam and Death are standing there, and they are concerned because what they see is uh, this creature standing there holding a oh that's a flesh golem yeah uh, flesh golem. <laughs> yeah so you see this creature standing there bear hugging a woman oh my god uh, oh very, very elderly woman. A woman how tall is this golem uh i think it's like eight feet how tall is this eight woman? feet okay she's like yeah she's very she's very, she's very small uh, very diminutive here she comes that's her. Oh, her name is. She's a cutie. Her name is Nana. Ooh, yeah. Uh, Nanny Poo Poo. It's not immediately Poo-Poo. use a tentacle to try and. You say Nanny Poo Poo? Poo Poo. P U P U. Like platter. Nanny Poo Poo. N A N N Y. P O H. P O H. P O H. All right. So you see, you see this golem standing there, holding this woman in a bear hug, um, back to his front. And he's squeezing, and this woman's letting out a shriek. Yeah, can I try and use my tentacle to uh, evaporate beneath him and grab her out of his clutch? Yeah. 
Alright. <clears throat> so that's what I'm gonna do. Okay. I don't trust it. I have a bad feeling about it. Um Oh man. What? Well, I rolled a one for the fucking tentacle to grab her. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so what's gonna happen is the golem will see your tentacle come out. Mm -hmm. And he's going to let up a big foot and stomp down on it, uh, oh, pinning your foot oh. to the ground. And you are going to take. Uh, well, it's not connected to me. What is these it? are my these are my like tentacles that oh, I right. started getting from like yeah. around. You're not you're not Gideon. Yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah no no. no. <clears throat> okay so uh, actually, sorry still. purple tentacles come out of the ground. Yeah. Still even though you rolled a one, so you're going to take damage because you rolled yeah. a one. Um, so you take um, just roll two d six psychic damage. Oof. All right. Don't roll ones. God damn. Uh, 2d6? Seven total. Okay, so you take seven psychic damage as he stomps on your imaginary tentacles. Okay. Um, and he drops the lady. Uh, and she goes, Oh, God. That's good. Uh, she says, Stop, you fools. He's just helping me. I knew it. I was like, I'm not going to do this. Much. And yeah, well, then why'd you do your tentacle thing? So um, she stands up and she cracks her back and she says, Oh, this arthritis is killing. And the golem sits back down and he's playing with some bones. He's hitting a skull with a femur, making a tong, 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 tong. So he's not very bright, as you can tell. You, you've heard of golems before. This one just happens to be of the flesh variety. Um, so you come to this kind of campsite village and uh, the only structure that's still intact is a lone hut about a thousand yards southwest of the gate at the edge of a boulder field the hut is made from thatch and animal hide stretched over the rib cage of an immense reptile animal skulls wind chimes totems how do you tell a reptile about this cage it looks like a dinosaur it's got a little tail <laughs> <laughs> seen it before really um, large dog. yeah whatever whatever you want to make it and shells rattle in the breeze and smoke drifts from the hut um, <laughs> the uh, human woman that you just met impossibly old crippled by, by arthritis blinded by cataracts her face and bald pale uh, sorry bald pate are outlined with streaks of yellow clay suggesting the shape of a skull uh, so she comes up to you huddles up and introduces herself, and uh, she introduces herself as Nanny Poo Poo. Uh, N A N A N N Y P U apostrophe P U. That is Nanny Poo Poo. She informs you that she was the medicinal doctor of the tribe of hunters that was here. Recently, uh, the Terra folk had grown in numbers and launched a counterattack against the hunters and wiped out this whole village. Uh, she oh. was the only one that has been left alive. Uh, she kind of attributes that to her kind of connection with the gods and uh, lets you know that um, as of right now, she doesn't know when they will be back, but um, they they always come back. You said like hunters? The, the folks that were here, the villagers were all hunters. This is a, this is a hunting okay. tribe. Who keeps coming uh, back? Though? What's the, the, ter the, terra, the terra folk. Terra folk, okay. Yeah. And um, she will let you know that um, her friend here, the, the uh, flesh golem, is actually something she has created. Um, the, from the attack, uh, she has sewn together with some magic um, this creature. Uh, she used to have a much more sturdy companion uh, that she informs you. Um, <laughs> His name was Vorn. Um, this this Jason. guardian, this uh, yep, this guardian was a. Uh, she describes him as a mechanical guardian, um, much of the same size and dimensions as this flesh golem, but uh, he had some magical properties and could actually store magic inside him, and um, was actually recently taken away by a group of uh, ant-faced goblins. Uh, <laughs> And so she says that there was also an amulet that she possessed that uh, could control this guardian, and uh, that was also taken. That's why they were able to take the guardian. 
Hmm. Um, so she says that um, she is willing to help you guys as adventurers. Um, she actually makes an insinuation that uh, you've all heard of the recent curse that's been going around. Um, and she says she is actually the only living thing in Chult that can um, put a stop to, or at least a halt to this curse. Um, she, why? No, why? Wait, 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 just wait, let me finish. So she lets you know that um, there's actually a um, ritual that she can perform that can take a dead creature <laughs> and bring them back to life um, without, without the penalties that she's been seeing recently. Mm. Uh, she offers a service to you in exchange for going to get her guardian. I'd like to approach her. I mean, if anybody else wants to do something first, that's fine. <clears throat> um, why, why is she able to yeah, not have this her. curse happen? Talk to her. I asked you, said Her name's Nanny. You can talk to her. Yeah. Nanny. Nanny Poo Poo. Ah! Ah! Listen, she, she, she's go. actually bl- she's blind, so you need to be right in her face. All right, hey, hey. <laughs> she's blind, so talk to her. Listen, listen, listen. Uh, uh, like lady. Lady. Where? How do you know? She's not retarded. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that word anymore. Excuse me. She's not handicapped. <laughs> she's she's not an autist. All right. Yeah. Uh, how do you how do you know how do you raise people from the dead, but not have the curse? Like how what is the what is the curse then? Uh, she lets you know that uh, from what she can tell, this is a death curse. She's heard of this before, um, not as extreme as as this one. Uh, she has she herself is a worship, worshiper of Merkel, uh, who's the Lord of Bones. Steve He's Merkel? actually uh, yes, <laughs> distant cousin. Um, he's the Lord of Bones. He's actually uh, one of the um, death gods. And she, Very nice. she is able to channel him into the recently deceased and bring them back. Oh. Uh, which supersedes the magic that has been brought upon this land. So um, she lets you know that uh, she doesn't allude to exactly how old she is, but through your conversation, she is very old. Um, more so than expected from a human. Um, so she so, said that, that is how she's able to... She, the connection between her and her god is how she's able to bring these people back. Okay, so who put this death curse down? Do you know who did that? She has no idea. Um, all she knows is... Or that how? It feels like a strong necromancy. Um, she doesn't know where it's coming from. It feels like it's deeper in the jungle. Um, she does know of someone who might have a better idea... Um, but they are further in the forest, um, and she could point you in that direction. Talitha speaks up. How do you know that you're not the one that did this in the first place, and you just want this amulet to increase your power? Uh, the, she, she'll let you know the amulet's purely just to control the guardian. Uh, the only reason I was able to survive, uh, was between the worship of my god and the guardian itself. Uh, it's a very powerful creature. Uh, and I just need it to be able to control them. Otherwise, it's just a hunk of metal. Uh, you can yell at it all you want. It will. May I approach? Yeah. So I rattle the back of the pig up to her. Mm-hmm. And I say, woman. You've already been she's turned. She's turned the other way from you and does not hear you. Oh, she's deaf? She, uh, she's, yeah. What? She's, very, she's not deaf, deaf. She's very old. Well, Doesn't I know, but everybody else has been talking to her. Like, why can't yeah, she they're, hear they're, me? They're, they're, they're in their face. You got you to tap her on the shoulder. Well, I don't have any arms. <laughs> no, never, never on the shoulder. I don't know. How do you do that? Yeah, just like slap it up. I want to go up. I don't know. Like, try to put my pig and headbutt her. Hey, lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ew, ow. God damn. Ew, not the face. Not the face. Okay. Uh, so I'd she like turns to, you. Huh? Yeah, and let me, like, you've been through too much today, woman. <laughs> I want to cook for you. I want to provide for you. I want to give you the best wine this country has seen. She leans up to you and goes, This one smells like grease. He's a very greasy pig. And she, <laughs> she, she says, uh, I need not sustenance. I haven't needed that for a long time. No, but I want to offer you a boon. Uh, 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 an offer from us. To know that we want to 
um, procure your services and know that we respect your position. She lets out a little curtsy with hobbled knees and creaks. And she says, thank you, thank you. So you'll be on your way then. I'll be on my way then? To go to go get her guardian. Oh, no, I, wanted, I, just, I just wanted to like, okay, we're out of this. <laughs> we're yep. gone? Okay. Yep. All right, bye. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> no, I was going like, to like flourish that to like have her like, you know, have an experience with her and get her knowledge. Yeah, but, but we don't, we got our knowledge. Goodbye. That's, it. That's all you're really going to. We're out. Like, never mind, woman. Fuck she, off. <laughs> she has no time for your okay. pleasantries. Um, she, she wants Keep to go online, by the way. Just going to walk away, throw my hands up in the air. Fucking necromancy. What the fuck? What's yeah. happening? I don't know. <laughs> so uh, she sits, she sits back down and she, Stone Gone look like they're playing some kind of game with bones, um, throwing them against the wall and placing coins. Is he a stone golem? This is the flesh golem. The, fl- the flesh golem, yeah. Can I eat so she, di- she directs you. Uh, last she saw was that uh, the stone... Oh, sorry, there you go. The uh, guardian was taken um, further down into the jungle. Um, and it's down in the um, Aldani Basin, which is to your southeast. Uh, so it's a large swamp land. Um, and because you're so high, you can actually see down to that area. And it looks just like a big murky swamp area. Um, it's probably five or so miles away from where you're at right now. Um, and that's where she said the last time she saw the goblins heading with the guardian. Is everyone moving along? Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. I want to cast mirror image. Okay. To use my ability to lure the flesh golem, the dumb flesh golem, away with my mirror. He's not going to. Okay. He was created by her, so he only listens to her. Even if you look like her, you're not. She, you didn't create her. No, of me. I want to like lure him away with my own image. Of what? Myself. Just like, hey, buddy, come over here. <laughs> oh. Oh, no, you're not doing that. <laughs> He'll kill you. Like, he will kill you. <laughs> He'll kill my mirror image and I'll eat her. No, oh, oh, don't do that either. Because okay. she'll kill you. All right, <laughs> fine. <laughs> Just don't do that. This game sucks. <laughs> yes, sorry. Can you you try to to <laughs> yeah, let me try to eat uh, everybody that tries to help us. It's not going to move them. Yeah. Well, you're gone down. already. They already helped you. I promise you, don't eat important characters. <laughs> I'm going to eat people that, that are done. Did you learn this the first fucking episode? Jeez. Yeah. No, no, say... I'd learned nothing. You ate something that, that was still important to us. I ate something that was yes, not important. Yes, I'm trying to help you learn in retrospect. Uh, she, she is the only person in this entire continent that can do anything about this curse. I right know, now, so. and with my ability, I want to absorb her knowledge through my mouth. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it won't work like that. I'll just let you know. Okay. Because she, she has to pray to her god to get that power. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's not, it's not something she just knows. Okay. Um, all right, so um, she points you in the right direction. You can head down. The, there's actually a nicer path down the cliff face that she pulls apart a branch on a, on a tree and shows you. <coughs> That's much smoother to get down uh, to the basin if you'd like. Okay. I'll ride my pig down that path. Excellent. All right. I shall follow. Yes. So you guys... We're off. You guys are off. Let me just grab this one picture because I think it's going to be great. <laughs> so you guys head off. Um, you get down to the uh, bay, and uh, it's literally swampland. It's, it's thick, uh, knee-high water. Um, it's, it's very slow going. And um, once you get there, you actually hear the sound of like, uh, like a clicking. And you, you kind of sense just through passive perception that um, every once in a while you see some movement underwater. Mm. Yo, uh, uh, fuck. Character names. Uh, Gideon. Yeah. 
Uh, you have the ability to speak to water animals now, yes? Uh, no. Um, <laughs> no I can... No, I can control water. Um, uh, I suppose you probably can't. Huh? Remove the water so we can speak to the animals. No. Right. <laughs> Just empty the water. No of this thing. <laughs> or, uh, sorry. Flippity floppity flippity yeah. No, I was thinking of my warlock because I didn't. Because I'm not the water one. If I were the water warlock, I'd be able to speak with animals, not water animals. Uh, someone in your party has to speak with animals. I think it was yes, kinda... I do speak with them. Oh! <laughs> okay. Chicken's on my shoulder, by the way. Okay. No, I can't, by the way. You're fucking winged monkey. It might, it might continue. We can't see though. it. We can't see oh. the fucking chicken, so it doesn't matter to anybody but you. It might in the future. Oh, you know it won't all. No. I'm just. It won't at all. No. Fuck it. <laughs> it won't. Where's you guys? can't say the chicken's on your shoulder if nobody sees the chicken. Well, I'm just saying. We can't this fucking bard that we, we allowed to come with us see. is crazy. Fuck fuck. Fuck. What's happening? She makes she makes weird chicken noises constantly. She is She's so pretending weird. to feed something on her fucking shoulder. It's real weird. Yeah. But the the food disappears though. It's crazy. People think I'm crazy. Oof. Well, I'm I'm cool with it. I'm the brains out of the living. <laughs> the giant turtle. My says. pig is jealous as fuck. <laughs> I think my pig so, can see it. I'm not sure. You guys, are waiting, you guys are wading through the water. Yeah, I'm being really careful with yeah. the water. If I, ha I mean, if I have to, I'll move the water out of the way. But I mean, it's uh, really swampland, so I mean, can I do something? a lot of water to move. I'm gonna do something. Okay, yo, what are you doing? It's not an attack. But to find out how real this chicken is. Mm -hmm. Uh, whatever creatures are around us in a twenty-foot cube or sixty-foot range need to do a dex uh, saving throw. Okay. They gotta be sixteen. They gotta beat sixteen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He said. So Misha Miller said, Oh, wow. Uh, how about a four? For, a <laughs> <laughs> for one of them. Okay. Uh, there's only one within range, but it is a four. Sorry. One of them. Okay. Wow. Uh, I cast uh, Fairy Fire. So that creature is now uh, lit up in a, a green colored light that we can see it. Through the water. Okay. Uh, uh, so I'm... any if we attack it, everybody gets advantage. Uh, has advantage on the attack. Cool. Good roll. Yep. So you see, see under, uh, you see about thirty-five feet away, uh, probably a little northwest of you, um, underneath this murky, murky water, uh, a green glow start to happen. How far away is this? Thirty-five feet. We There's a green glow in the no, water. No, nope, it's just there. Okay. Green glow like in the water. Yep, the water 35 feet away is glowing green. Fucking so shit. Just to like a, get a, a, an idea of our pathway, like we're just like at the edge of you water. Are, so you are, you are in a swamp. Okay. You are knee deep in water. Underneath the water, 35 feet away from you, there is now a glow patch after uh, Panda just cast that fairy fire. Okay. That's so there, there is there's one creature that is now glowing green, thirty five feet away from you, underneath the water. Okay, I'll just get on anything else. Okay. So, how does that work with my pig? Like, I don't have legs. Um, can he swim? He's got a snorkel or something. He's cool. Yeah. Well, he's invincible, so he can't be hurt. Yeah. Can I'm yeah, not worried with the pig, but can I just like swim with him on top, like be on top of the yeah, water, he, or do you he, want me to sink? Saddled on him. No, no, you're good. Okay. Right. Can I use divine sense? Yeah. Do you have to roll for that? Um, what's that? Just to see if they're <laughs> evil, right? Yeah. Well, I could see if it's um evil, if it's a celestial fiend or undead within sixty feet of me. That's it not is neither of those things. Okay. Guys, we're freaking out about a gator that's just sitting over there. I'm not freaking out at all. I'm just so swimming. <laughs> we'll go forward. Yep. 
So, uh, go ahead. Peak stroke. Uh, if you'd like, um, you'll get closer to this green glowing spot. Um, it'll back up slightly as you get closer, but still stay within range of you. Um, and you can hear more clicking, but faster now. Uh, and then further ahead, you'll hear a response click. Um, and then you hear another response click 20 feet away from that. So it sounds like there's multiple now. Can I use um, Speak with Animals? I... Is it an animal? Maybe. Do we know that? I'm checking. Um, I want a nature not, roll, please. It is not... There you go. Perfect. It is not an animal. Okay. You can certainly do a nature roll. Um, okay. I'll actually have you look to Hugh real quick and then roll that roll and see Hugh? if he knows... Yeah, oh, Hugh, what the fuck, what, yeah, what's going on there. here? Right. Yep. yep. It's your guide. So, Hugh, what's going on here, bro? Uh, have Adam roll his roll real quick. <laughs> so that is a natural one. Okay. Plus, hold up, plus six for nature. Plus so three, you'll, you'll turn to Hugh and just go, Me? <laughs> and he'll go, uh, and he'll, he'll say, I've, I've heard this before. I've heard that clicking before. Um, this is the lobster folk. Lobster folk. The lobster folk. They are, uh, from, from what I remember hearing, uh, they are former Chalton humans that um, belong to the Aldani tribe. Uh, they were actually fishermen here and actually fished these waters clean of, of lobsters by the thousands. Um, and from the local tale, um, the god Mbatu actually got angry with this and meshed man and lobster together. And uh, now these lobster folk live in these waters. Uh, everything I've heard is that they're just scavengers. They're not necessarily dangerous, uh, but they... they go and find treasure and wealth on dead adventurers uh, and, and anything else that passes in these waters. I would like to, and, and as soon as he says this, I'd like to drop 50 gold in the water. Cool. That's okay. a, toss a coin to your lobster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so as you do that, great, great role, or great idea, by the way. Uh, as you do that, you hear a furious amount of clicking. And out of the water actually pops uh, this cat here. And. It's a cat. Uh, that's not a cat. Larry, is that you? Oh, yeah. And his little <laughs> eye socks perk right up. Oh my god, his eyes. And he's uh, holding he's holding some coins in his claws. And he says, Oh, you're alive. He speaks common. Yeah. Just, you're alive, he said? Yeah, he's used to dead things dropping, not. Adventurers, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, fishing, okay. fishing with gold. So uh, he he pops up, and um, as he pops up, he lets out a couple more clicks with his small claw, and uh, four or five, I'll say five more, pop, pop, pop up out of the water, kind of in a uh, semicircle around you. How tall are they? Like, I mean, um, I'm gonna like these. These guys are. Um, it doesn't say height, but um, tell my pig to like. Um, they're they're big. The they're... Throw you in the gym. Throw me the gym that makes me like have oh. limbs. Okay. Like, yeah. Okay. What are they called again? Uh, King. The the lobster folk. Lobster folk. And I approach the one that that came up first. Yep. And then hold out my hand to his claw to like shake. Okay. He will extend a claw, and kind of leery, but. Shake your hand. They are seven to ten feet tall. They're big, yeah. I'm seven feet tall. In your power armor, yeah. yeah. So he'll shake your hand, um, and he'll say, "Who are you? Uh, we haven't seen adventures this far." My name is Shavas. We've I'm been sent here on a like journey old, to find out about this curse, the Death Curse. You say you've never seen one, anyone alive before. He says, not in a great while. We've we've been in these waters for many years. I lost track of time, to be honest with well, you. We want to help you. We want everyone to be alive. We want to fix this problem we, for you. We are well alive, just very familiar with other curses. Well, tell us all you know. Uh, the lobster folk will, will fill you in uh, on the story of what actually happened. Um, they were fishing these waters clean, um, but... 
the um, as they were doing so, they they became greedy, uh, and they always used to pray to Mbatu, uh, Mbatu, excuse me, and um, they stopped because they were they were too busy. Uh, they they woke up in the morning, fished, 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 sold, bought, and they stopped praying to him. And so what happened was they made him mad, and uh, he turned them and their kin into these constructs of lobster and man so um they they've been living here in in these waters for a long time these, these are generations as these lobsters and they've been kind of thriving um they hoard the treasure that they find it's not a ton um they they just amass it uh, through old habits and um that's that's what they do they they are just kind of scavengers i want to place my hand on his shoulder and then make a religion roll if I can. Yep. And say prayer is important, my friend. I rolled a 15 plus 6, so 21. Okay. Oh, with provision, uh, 24. Yep. And say, um, and just learn about the religion overall from them with that. From their religion? Yeah, I just want to like know whatever I can about their religion. Okay. With that role and express that yep. you know I know everything they're talking about and that prayer is important and I understand their plight. Okay, so he appreciates that. He they're usually they're usually met with a lot of uh, animosity. Um, not everybody has seen a seven to ten foot tall lobster man scuttling around, yeah. um, so they're usually attacked. They're very timid folk, actually. Um, that's why they primarily live underwater, um, and they only surface very infrequently um, to grab things, treasure, or um, anything that's obstructing the waters. So uh, he appreciates your hospitality and, and um, kind of fills you in on on their god, uh, former god that they're mad at now, but um, in kind of the, just the lore of the area. Um, Gideon would like to ask about uh, whether or not we... Um... One second. Um, before you go any further, I'd like to drop. Um, I just want to like tell him like, what do you need, my friend? I'll give you all I have. If I can count on you to, to support us and to, to know that that you appreciate our cause and you'll help us in any way you can. He basically tells you all he wants is to be left alone. Um, he wants no trouble from you. Um, they recently just came into possession of a uh, new idol. Uh, they, there was a group of goblins that passed through here and they attacked the lobster folk. With them, they had a large mechanical creature that they were unsure of who it was, um, but that mechanical creature killed a lot of their, their family folk. Um, but now it sits motionless. Uh, they've kind of been scared of it, but also have, have thought it to be a message from their god former god um you know him in a vessel form and so they've been worshiping it and he points over to this uh creature that's kind of it looks like it's almost frozen in time and there's there's moss growing on it it looks like it's been there for good a good bit so i'd like to like tell him that you know if i can rely on his um support i'll give him all i have and i'll give him uh 148 gold that i have left uh, he appreciates that. Um, and and what, what are you ask? What are you asking from him? Um, just like support in the future. Like if there comes a time that you know we oh, need sure. passage or we need help in a fight or whatever, that yep. he will be. He'll assure you that anytime, anytime you and your colleagues pass through these waters, you'll you'll be on the or right if side. I message of them and ask for information, something like that in the future. Yep. Sort of thing. He, agree, he agrees that you'll be allies of the lobster and I'll folk. I'll tell him that I'll inspect this mechanical creature because I have a unique knowledge to these things. He can see you being mechanical. Uh, so he agrees. He, he says, uh, be and careful I, because he yeah. witnessed firsthand what this thing can do. And I'll also tell him like, like your, bad. your worship of this mechanical thing is not your god. He's puzzled and I say you know you don't need to worship this thing you need to worship your god that that caused you to be this way he mentions to you that he's never seen power like this creature has um so th their only conclusion with this this is a vessel of the god okay 
So he's just confused as to why you're now saying no. That. Okay. So you can go ahead and try and persuade him if you'd like. No, but let everybody else take their turns. They okay. Head enough turn. Yep. So you, everyone around can hear Adam and Creature's conversation. Um, he points over, and you all notice this mechanical creature um, is standing there. Um, what the lobster folk says to Adam is the last he heard is is the goblins were calling this thing. Um, they're unsure as to what that meant, but... Um, I That broke up. What did you say they were calling it? Vorn. Vorn. And oh. we're trying to return this back to the old lady, right? Out of character. From, from what now you can ascertain is that this is the guardian that she was mentioning. I like to put my blacksmith tools into my armor. Don't we, have, don't we find some pendant on the ground for goblins? Gideon walks over to the um golem. Oh no. And oh, my bad. Gideon walks over to the golem and uh, with his hand inside his pocket uh, with the amulet wrapped around it um, yeah. says to the golem rise for him. You'll, you'll uh it takes a second, but you'll hear some whirring inside, and um, some rust kind of creaking, but it stands up uh, and, and stretches, and uh, then hunches back down, and um, it takes a knee in front of you and kind of bows its head, and the lobster folk are scared. They, they scatter. Um, they, they haven't seen this thing move in a long time, and um, he, the one that was talking to Adam actually drops the gold he had, um, dives underwater and scoots. I like to walk over and pick up that gold. Oh, I agree. Fuck. Vorn, follow. So the uh, start walking back to the party. Guardian stands up and um, follows behind you. I look at Gideon and I say. Where did you come across the amulet? You don't see any amulet, but um, oh. I, I, have, <laughs> I have an amulet. I mean, it's in my pocket. I have it in my hand, but no one else can see it. Oh, uh, okay. Well, then I'll say, how are you able to do this? How are you able I, to make this work? I have a special connection to it. Uh, I'd like to roll... I'm gonna actually cast detect thoughts on him. On I have, I have psychic defense. <laughs> <laughs> so even if I attempted to use it, you would not be able to, or I would not be able to penetrate your mind. Yeah, all my all my powers work. are all psych psionic, um, pretty much. But we, c I'm not sure. I can use this to you. I have resistance to all psychic damage and advantage on saving throws. Uh, I don't even know if you... You don't even roll. Oh, no, you do. You make, you make a wisdom save. Yeah. So I'll, I'll let that happen. You can do that. He just has to save out of it. 16 I'll, I'll have you. I'll have you roll with advantage just due to your psionic shit, but... That one's a net one. Come on. What the hell is this <laughs> Remember, you get plus three to your saving throw. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not letting me roll. What's wrong with the roller thing? Yeah, I'm going to restart. Second hand. Because it knows your lies. He doesn't do that. <laughs> he does do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here it is, your chain. Furiously. The icon to your real dice. Uh, uh, God damn it! Why is this not working? This is why I have a dice roller on my fucking phone. Well, I have a dice roller up on my screen. It's just not uh, working right now. Just go to Google and type roll roll d twenty. Dude, you have like at least a hundred dice right now, right? Yeah. <laughs> you want me to roll for you? <laughs> roll for you right now. Here you go. You got twelve. Why isn't it here? All right. I'm restarting the app. 
Oh, it's a nat one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the man with uh, dice. It's, it's a it's a twenty, uh, not nat. Okay. So what does that do for you, Panda? Um. Nothing. <laughs> nope. I attempt to. Yeah, you just. Uh, so his mind is the same. same. If it feels you. If it feels you gain insight into his reasoning, if any, his emotional state. That's not it's something, it's something that looms large in his mind. <laughs> something that looms large in his mind. Such as something that worries him or loves that he loves or hates. I would like to approach um, Gideon when this is happening. Yeah. I've got the 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 gold bag back because the yep. officer left it. Yeah, you can you can recollect all that gold. And I like to whisper in. Um, this is my armored form, seven feet tall. I like to grab Gideon's, uh, the right side of Gideon's, the back side of his face, his head, oh, no. and bring him in close, mm. if possible. Yeah, you're going to have to roll to attack then, because that's attacking. not happening. I'm not attacking. He's just whispering sweetly into your ear. I just want to talk to oh. you. Bring you closer to talk. <laughs> And we okay. had we had we had a bond earlier, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I thought true. you were trying to no, grab no, my no, face. No, 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 I'm not trying to <laughs> fuck you. I'm just like trying to talk to you. Jesus, I I've seen you lean in and eat people, dude. Well, I'm just, you know. No, you've not. You've not seen me do that. No, you have not. No, you that body. That's it. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. you've not seen me lean into that. So no. Um. So I bring him closer and I say, I really love lobster. <laughs> can Can we have them for supper? Didn't you just make? F I mentally I send this back to him. I open up a a little mental two way with uh, <laughs> Shavas. Shavas. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Beep. Um. Free, free uh, I say, didn't you just make friends with him? <laughs> friends are below food. I eat as many as you'd like. Don't forget about the one who wants to eat brains. <laughs> Do lobsters have brains? I uh, I walk I walk oh, away from uh, I walk ones. away from the the group a little bit and have Vorn follow me, okay. and I say, "Lobster folk, come! Vorn wishes you to abase yourselves before him." A base? Um, let uh, based with butter. Yeah, a a base as in <laughs> meal and grovel in front of for you. <laughs> yeah, can somebody get on some rendering of butter right now? No, He's like, can somebody let Avaholics know this is happening, please? Yeah, you you can see it, dude. You're right in front of the party. The lobster comes out with a uh, ladle and says, "If you got any mayonnaise, I'll." <laughs> Fucking a! Lucky for you. You I should have done the mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> um, can we no. make it have? Can we have it make lemon juice as well? No. <laughs> So as you do that, uh, you'll see two eye stalks pop out of the water, and um, a big, big lobster folk, lobster man, comes out of the water, and uh, he says, uh, "All right, I don't quite trust him, but uh, the God they've what? been praying to—he doesn't quite trust the God they've been praying to." Uh, He's—they've been praying to him as a statue. They don't know. They—they remember him killing. Tons of their folk. Um, what's that face? <laughs> what? I'm not sure what you're trying to do here. That's the face of like they pray to him, but now he's alive and they don't want to pray. They to him pray anymore. to him as a death god. They don't. <laughs> well, yeah, but now he's gonna like arise and cause death. Like they should be running scared or. Uh, that's that's why they he's think like, they're big, right? like the big lobster's like. Eh, I don't know. <laughs> Like, eh. Anyways, shut up. Uh, so he, he comes Wait, out. Uh, he's the he's the he's the biggest bald of them all, <laughs> and, says, and says, "I don't know." <laughs> Me. I, don't know, I could probably take him. <laughs> so go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so he he. How far away is he from Vorn? Oh, Thirty feet. Oh Jesus. Stop eating uh, your brains. Don't do that. <laughs> well, he has to every day. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Um, I, uh, let's see. I, I'll, I say in a very, you know, um, persuading voice, uh, 
Lord wishes you to approach. To appease Adam, the lobster says, fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, he won't, he won't come any closer. This is like, he, like I said, this, this guy is, this guardian is a, a monstrosity to him. Uh, even though he's the bravest, biggest one of the yeah. tribe. Uh, I, I, I send to, uh, Adam and Avalix, um, I'm like, this is as close as he's getting, I guess. If there's something you two need to need from him. Oh, Jesus. I don't know that, but yeah. Let's see what I can do. Hang on. <laughs> and if everyone could find a branch to get out of the water. So, as you guys are planning to eat this bull lobster guy, <laughs> um, the big one that popped out of the water <laughs> says, uh, the wizard must have sent you, right? To be able to reincarnate such a creature what wizard do you speak of the one that lives in the heart what heart he'll turn and point a claw up in the sky and as he does so the mist around the jungle kind of parts and you notice in the sky probably 200 feet in the air is a stone heart what it looks like the shape of a heart an anatomical heart not a cartoon heart um Actually, I have a picture of it, uh, if you would like. Yeah, I want to see this shit. It's very cool. You're going to be going there. Um, where is it? If you don't eat all our allies before you yeah, get there. Please stop eating things. <laughs> That's what so I this do. Is what, this is what you see floating in the air. Heart of Utal. Utal? Utal. Utal. This guy is. There's a wizard up there that we just got to take him out and it's ours? Let's fucking go. This, 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 he lets you know that, um, that heart has been there from the beginning of time. Uh, yes. it, it is the heart of the jungle. Um, what you see actually dripping from the heart is a red liquid, um, huh. that's falling from the heart all the way down to the swamp below. And how far are we away from where it's dripping? Well, it's 200 feet up and you're probably 100 feet from its direct south, so uh, A squared plus B squared equals you're pretty far away right now. Uh, and so he lets you know walking that um, the uh, it's not walking distance unless you can walk vertical. Um, so he lets you know that uh, there's a there's a wizard that came down. Uh, we, we've always known the heart to be uninhabited besides bats. Um, but one day we saw a fig we saw a figure standing uh, on the heart, and uh, then in the next second, this this woman was next to us. Um, with some kind of magic, she was able to directly come right to us and uh, asked us some questions about the curse. And uh, we we didn't know much about it, the being that we've all been pretty isolated. Yeah, but, your shitty uh, little crayfish people. Yeah, I got it. Crawfish, crawdaddies. But um, she she seemed satisfied with our answers and, and uh, popped up back into the heart. All right, let's go talk to Nanny Poo Poo about the. Uh, well, that's this is what Gideon's thinking is that he wants to go back and talk to Nanny Poo Poo about the heart. Yeah, let's go. Um, totally agree. The uh, I would just say like your gods are very disappointed in you. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying this to the yes. Monster? <laughs> yeah, to the lobster I talked to, not the big lobster, the other one I talked to. Oh, he's gone. Whatever. They yeah. out. <laughs> you, you can still you can still say it. Yep. The big guy might relay the message, but okay. he sw he swam away. <laughs> um. um All right. Your gods are very disappointed. <laughs> I saw. I saw. I saw. Got a good religion <laughs> role for nothing, but cool. <laughs> yeah. The uh. You may name just says, "Come, Zord or Vorn in uh, Zord." Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Got a flashback. Oh. Um, yeah, and then uh, tells the party that uh, that he thinks, or I think that uh, we need to ask Nanny Poo Poo about the heart, and then figure out a way to get there. Okay. Is that the consensus from everybody? Yes, I agree. I agree, but I also mentioned that I find it kind of odd. That she wouldn't have mentioned anything about this floating heart 
previously. You didn't ask, but you didn't know. So yeah, why would you tell? We look right up into the. We couldn't see it out of the air. It was no, the the mist. Oh, it was misty. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Misty-eyed lady. Uh, um, if any mist or um, odors or any of the rest of that shit from the swamp uh, starts, like, impairing our vision or, you know, clustering around us or anything like that, I, I use my cantrip of gust and just clear it all away immediately. Blow it all away. Cool. Yeah. I'd like to infuse my uh, blacksmith tools into my armor. Okay. As per my class. Sure. And then uh, mount the back of the born mount the back of him yep to okay. um uh access and learn anything i can from this beast um okay you learn no nah. you'll, you'll get a base knowledge of what it is uh you learn that it's a shield guardian uh, it's a large construct uh made of of metal and a soul um inside th these are these are created uh by someone uh, it's just like a golem but uh, um, inside has to be the soul of a living creature. And um, they are something that um, has been used a lot just for protection. Uh, this, this one seems to just be a very powerful one. Um, so that's basically what you learn right now. Is there now. anything I can add, kind of roll to access like the soul's happiness or lays in being in this condition? Say what again? The happiness of the soul within their malaise or happiness in being okay. in this condition. Can I learn that? Um, roll Arcana if you want to do that. <laughs> Getting your cool with him just mounting your boy. Huh? Yeah, it doesn't matter to me. Okay. Right. I don't know if you just wanted to. As, if he, as long as he's not trying to take it apart. No, I'm not trying to take it apart. Like I mean, no, I'm just like right. learning. And, and, the, and the, con the construct won't. The, the guardian won't necessarily so 26 react unless you're trying to hurt it so it just thinks you're being weird so 26 uh you learn that uh inside this creature is um an obsidian chunk uh, an obsidian stone uh and inside of that stone is the soul of one of the um fighters the hunters um that, like the chicken of that tribe uh that annie poopoo was a part of so it's willing. It's willing. It, it it's um it's its own personal will as a person is gone. Uh, it is basically the heart of this creature now. Uh, it's been it's been programmed to answer to whoever holds this talisman. This it has no feeling. Like it's fighting. it's lost any any it's lost any kind of compassion. You know human qualities. Uh, it, it's there. What if the soul was removed, the construct would become. Yeah. Yeah. But the soul has yeah, no yeah. desire, like the soul has no desire left or right to be removed or stay. No, right. it's just there's a battery pretty much. Just look for that. Yep. I see my case. Yeah, let's, make let's, case. let's go you back. You plan on going back? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I um, removed the gym, red pig. Excellent. As you guys are heading out, you hear a loud crack. Uh, oh, nice. This crack sounds like it actually came from the heart. Uh, and then directly next to you appears a woman. <clears throat> she, from what you can tell, by features, that, that is her name at the bottom. Yep. Melindra. Um, from what you can tell, she is... Um, an elven woman, um, and she teleports right next to you with, a, with another crack. You hear the crack, then another crack right next to you. And um, she says, you found an amulet. I telepathically tell her uh, I did. She speaks to you in open dialogue, and she says, where did you find it? I've been searching for that. I say found the what? Amulet. To control the creature, who found the amulet? One of you, I, obviously. This creature, I tell the, this creature I tell doesn't. The, this creature doesn't operate unless the amulet is here. I've seen an amulet. I tell Valindra that uh, they don't know about the amulet. She doesn't care. Uh, she says, "Well, one of you has it, and 
You should turn Who of you over. has the amulet? This this creature. <laughs> this creature is very powerful. I I could take it from. Um, you can try. Know, I don't know where you're planning on bringing it, but I hope not back to that woman. I uh, is she? She's an elf, right? Sure. We're absolutely taking this <laughs> robot back to the woman. She laughs and she says, "Do you know who that woman is?" I don't. Nanny Poo Poo? Would you like to do Nanny Poo Poo? She, she laughs again. She says, Nanny Poo Poo, what she goes by. Uh, that that woman's a hag. Uh, she's a green hag that's been living in that mountainside for generations. Uh, she recently just slaughtered a whole village uh, and, and took their souls. Uh, that that creature that you take apart, that have right now, uh, is, is the last remaining trace of that tribe. She only wants that to get that obsidian chunk back to perform a more powerful and spell. And I want to tell the group, like, she is not lying. This is the last remaining member of that tribe in case in obsidian. Okay. And what do you want with the amulet? Who do I want the amulet? I want the creature. I want the obsidian shard to destroy it. That hag can't have it. She'll become more powerful. I endorse this woman. <laughs> Stamp of approval. <laughs> I will give you the amulet and the soul of the heart. You can roll a deception check on this. Uh, she's 100% honest. She's 100% honest. She's being very forthright with you. Um, she has no reason to hide this. So she's been, she lets you know um, that she's been keeping an eye on these matters for a bit. Uh, she just didn't know where the amulet had uh, from. There, there is a magic surrounding that guardian, and only the keeper of the amulet can. Uh, uh, soul inside and um, so she's been up in the heart for a while uh, keeping an eye on things and now that she has access to it she would much like to have that amulet I say again no, who dress. among you has the amulet I, I tell Shavas in his head I'm like obviously I do since I control it <laughs> I very well but- Takes out a cigar. Oh, wait. <laughs> it's in my armpit. Yeah. It burns. <laughs> it burns my oh. back. <laughs> Ashes it out on his <laughs> belly. Like, oh. There's a big oh. scar on the outer pit. Yeah. Mold cigars I smoked. I ask Linda if you're speaking the truth, why don't you join us in going to her to destroy her together? Uh, she says, "Her living and dying does not concern me a bit. Uh, my concern is further in the jungle. Uh, I'm not sure if you are aware, but there is a curse on this land right now, and I am—I I have been sent to find the source." As have we. As have we. I'm, I'm going to say that that uh, the nanny, none of poo poo, poo poo. She's she told us that she has the cure for this. Nay Poo Poo <clears throat> worships a death god. The, cur- the, the cure that she gives is a temporary cure. Uh, it, it turns you into an undead, and, and you still die. Uh, she's, she's been peddling. That's how she got into that tribe in the first place, by peddling. Uh, she, she came in, performed a couple death rituals, and uh, then, then she devoured that village. I'm doing a deception check. Shall we kill her? Wait, she's already... I want to try to do the deception check. She's. I why did she not do this to us? Dude, hold on. Deception would mean you're trying to lie to her. No. Uh, no do... Deception. Deception is. That's insight. Like, uh, uh, like oh, no, insight. Is it insight? Pres- yeah, insight. Is it pres- uh, insight. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Uh, I'll do an insight check. Okay. You already did one, didn't you? I mean, already told us she's 100% honest. Yeah. Yeah. So she's honest. Up to now. But yeah, go ahead. What do you mean up to now? I mean, no, I already said you only did, you only did one. <laughs> <laughs> we can't all do one. Uh, Nineteen. Right, let's, let's go with this. She is Nineteen. Telling, she's still telling the truth. Yeah. Manda, what, uh, what she know, is she evil or is she good? What, what, what is she? Is it, yeah, can I use divine sense? Just use detect evil. You we have that as a spell. No, you can, you can't detect her at all. Okay. She's she's she might as well not. In terms of that, she might as well not even. Gideon says, "Why? 
Why would we trust you with this amulet? What makes you any better than this woman? We're, we're already trying to solve the, the riddle of this curse. She says, she lets you know that um, I know the answer to this curse. I've been sent to collect the answer. By who? My, by ones more powerful than myself. What is this curse then? This is, this is a death curse. This is this is a necromancy that is- But who, a, who started it? A very strong lich. Do you know where this lich is or- I don't know what where he using? is, but I, I know where his phylactery is. Well, let's go fuck this dude up then. I need your help. And oh, in no. return, I will help you. May we eat the poo poo woman? <laughs> you can eat all you want, but uh, I have pressing needs that needed to be attended to. So if you will, I need I'm that sure you do. I want to roll detect thoughts. I cast detect thoughts on her too. You can't. Nothing gets through. Fuck. I asked Shavash, should I, should I give her the amulet? <clears throat> Give it the amulet, uh, and so the, we're messaging, or are you asking? Yeah, I'm just, no, no, it's telepathically. Okay, tele telepathically, I say, if she will give Apollux the brains of all these lobsters, then she might have the <laughs> <laughs> uh, Oh, my God. You guys and your stomachs. I just start shaking my ass, head. Yes. No, you, yes. Can't, hear this. you can't hear this. You can't hear this. No, this is, um... So, what will you do for us if I give you this amulet? Or should I just have the shield guardian crush you? <laughs> First of all, he could not crush me, neither could any of you. But, I will give you the brains that you seek from the poor lobster folk. You heard me? For this. Yeah. I heard, if you're she talking telepathically, I could hear you too. No. Yeah. Well, I'm only, I'm only speaking, um, I can open it up to whoever I want. I was only asking Shavas at the time, but it's fine. Yeah, we have a no, um, she can hear me. She can still hear you. Yeah, she can still hear me. Um, and I'm like, we're going to need a little bit more than some brains from the lobster folk. These, it, these people Simpletons. wouldn't eat them anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, she says. You give me the amulet now. I provide you these lobster folk. And I don't kill all of you right now. <laughs> and take the amulet. Can I hear this? And as she, oh, she's loud and clear. And as she says That's this, there's, a, or, there's, there's an aura that comes dark. What? A dark aura comes around her as she says this. It's faint, but she's Dude, getting pissed off. I'm just getting worried that this is the lich, but um, if I... I'd like to test this. If a lich needs a robot to fight, <laughs> it's no goddamn she lich. She doesn't need the robot. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like this, this is um, not a play. If she can kill us all like that, she doesn't need this robot. I, uh, I, I pull my hand out of my pocket and then a tentacle just kind of weaves out and with the amulet hanging from it. Okay. And puts it in front of her. Or well, just lets it hang in front of her. She takes the amulet and uh, lets out a, kind of a, a side smile. And uh, <laughs> Morons. she takes the amulet and crushes it. <laughs> and the, the guardian falls over, <laughs> just forward at the waist. And she reaches in and punches through its chest, pulls out the obsidian shard, puts it in her bag. And then she says, be seeing you. And she cracks. <laughs> and you hear the crack again up by the heart. And um, as she leaves, you feel the you feel the like a like a energy around you. And after that, one, two, three, probably a dozen of the lobster folk float to the surface, and they are pale. They're they're dead. Brains! <laughs> <Sorry, bird. laughs> just gonna run right over to the biggest one and just start slurping. I just want. Take the claws. I roll my eyes because this is a little. Mm. I roll. I roll a press and dedication, and I said perfectly that time. And I'm gonna walk a smell of buttery citrus garlic smell <laughs> around the area, just for Shabazz. Thank you. I find I try to find a little bit of a dry spot and to wait out this uh, 
feeding frenzy, and I, I use prestidigitation to uh, dry my clothes. And I'll eat as much lobster as you allow. <laughs> oh, I'm only eating the brain, so you can have all of them. So like I said, there's, there's 12 lobster folk. Um, as they float to the surface, definitely dead. Um, looks like life drained right from them instantly. Are they still uh, they're, food? they're good for food, yep. They're, they're still flesh. Um, it's just their soul looks like it was taken. What does Hugh think about all this? Yeah. Uh, Hugh is picking his fingernails. And uh, he's just... What are? <laughs> 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 he's got a I just immediately <laughs> tried to picture that. Yeah. <laughs> he's got a toothpick in his teeth and he's. <laughs> um, Jesus. So he he mentions oh to you God. that uh, he know he knows who that was. Yeah. Why did you fucking say something while she was here? It's best it's not. not to cross that woman. Who is she? That's a Belinda Shadow Mantle. Uh, what, she, what does she do? She, she is um, a, a servant of um, the Red Wizards. Uh, fuck Who are the Red Wizards? The Red Wizards of Fae. The Red Wizards of Fae. They are yeah. the most powerful wizards, period. Uh, yep. There's it was seven or nine of them. So there's, um, is she they, one of them or just one of their... They're, they're basically gods. Um, and she is, she is the vessel of them uh she she goes out she from what he knows is that woman that we just met um is not as she appears uh she is an ext extremely powerful um from what he heard is lich and um it's rare that she shows up um for just any reason so uh he he kept his mouth shut because he knows of her through being part of the royal guard uh, the the wizard that you guys pissed off back in the town has connections with the red wizards and that's why it was bad to piss him off because now you're on their radar um but uh so so we this get she's not now <laughs> he pleased her no no she's not one of the red wizards she's just like a, a she's, she's a general or... she's a general in there uh, yeah, we gave her a favor She's the Mara Jade of the story. She did her favor, so, did we like we pissed off a wizard. We like appeased a general. Well Yeah. We gave him a token and he got a little magic or they got a little magic thing, whereas we also murdered one of their yeah, fucking wizard's children. Yeah. I don't saying, think it's quite like even. saying it comes to some point so, where it's like we're well, trying well, here. What I want you to know is that um <laughs> She she easily could have killed all of you right there, dead. But yeah. um, she only keeps those alive that are useful. So she's using you now as tools. Mm -hmm. uh, you provided a service for her. It's not a favor that you did her. She could have just taken that stone. You provided her a favor, and she's planning now to use you to help. You know, help her find find this. Yeah. I guess we can't have the heart now. I mean, let me try. No. The heart in the sky. Those yeah. red wizards sound like I need. I want to talk to those guys. How did we get up there? The heart teleport. You have to teleport. That's what she does. Yeah. Or fly. Or fly. Also, wait till I learn dimension door, and then we can go. Yeah. All right. So. So. We lost the. Um, Nanny's still expecting you. Um, yeah. she, from what you know from Valindra, she herself is not as she appeared. Um, when she said that, um, it dawns on Hugh that he has heard stories of a hag that going around infiltrating tribes and shape-shifting to become a matriarch or a witch doctor or someone in that tribe, then taking their souls and and storing them in these obsidian crystals. Um, Gideon asked the party, is, uh, does anybody really want to kill the green hag? Because, I mean, at this point, that would just be kind of fun, but it's not going to gain us anything at this point either, I don't think. Say the hag no. is dead. No. She would not accept my feast. She is dead to me. 
Yeah, I don't I don't see any point to killing her. I mean, but I wouldn't trust other than the... that she would devolve anyways. Yeah. Yeah, at this point, if, if we couldn't... She could have more souls, though. That's true. Lost. But I'm She's been doing this evil, for a while. and I don't give a shit. I want to inspect the uh, mechanical thing, just as a side. It's a husk now. Well, yeah, but I'll see how it like, linked to the soul, like how it was integrated. Yep. Um, it, it, from what you can tell, it's just a, a vessel inside. There were some connections um, mechanically, and uh, it was drawing. From what you can tell, is this, this creature takes a huge sum of energy to power, and that soul that it had was barely enough, and that was the strongest soul that... Obviously, if someone like her is interested in it, um, you Colored, need a anything good from power the, source. Uh, the, the husk and, and like how to replicate that in the future. Um, I'll let you. I'll let you do two things. Okay. I'll let you get a really basic knowledge of it, of just how it works. Okay. But to understand how to make one, you're gonna have to go find the hag. Okay. So like straight up necromancer, you're trying to learn, bro. It's not necromancy. It's it's kind of just like a. Well, I'm I'm an I'm an I mean, you're creating a constant, You're creating so, Stealing a, souls, bl uh, life force, life essence. You that's you all power it with, You could power it with something else, but that's probably the most efficient way. Like it's literally my my class to, to figure out armors and these yeah. mechs. Right? Yes, I mean to build one, you'd have to find the hag and find how. Okay, so that gives motivation. Sure. I'd like to plead to the group that we need to reinvest with the hag to find out her perspective on this. I don't want to talk with her. <laughs> we'll do it in character. I know, you want to. I know you, know you don't want to as a person, but what would your character want? I have an idea. No. I have an idea. I could potentially disguise myself as this mechanical creature. Amanda, what is your uh, um, and you can walk in there and kill her? Um, open, well, I'm open the engine. Your lawful alignment. good. Lawful good. Lawful good. And then you know this pe person was bad. Well, I guess. Yeah. And she's a paladin. <laughs> Yeah, like yeah, you'd be. Nature paladin. I think I'm you'd be compelled paladin. to go back to the hag. Really, like I want to like fight you. But I'm saying, I think your character would want to go back for justice. Just to make things even. Yes. Yeah. From what you can tell from what Hugh is telling you, uh, this won't stop with the hag. She'll keep doing this. The, so the hag, the hag, the hag, the hag will keep, you know, assaulting tribes uh, and and. Overtaking them from inside and, and devouring them. Oh, then I think. I, then I think she. I second that. Okay, I think we should. I think we should kill her though. I can possibly disguise myself as this creature, to at least Go ahead. maybe uh, get a just, <clears throat> get an advantage on get her. Close. At least get close. Nice. Yeah, um, we don't have the amulet to give her anymore, though, so she'll know something's up pretty quick. Well, we also, we also have prestidigitation. <laughs> yeah, I got that. Faith is just an ability, but I can just my do illusion. it. Use disguise yeah. self at will with my illusion. I, I was if she sees the mechanical too. thing, she'll assume we have the I have, if I can amulet, unless she can sense it. If I can get close enough to her, I can use Turn the Faithless. It's a divinity, channel divinity. And any any um, illusion, shape-shifting, or effect that she is using has to be revealed in her true form. Nice. Too. So? Let me just walk right up to her and just do that. Yeah, bitch. Let's wreck this hussy. <laughs> walk right up to her and do that, and then cast Moonbeam. I'll just take so all the serious. lobster I can and stuff it in my pouch. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just slap we, her across the face and then blast her. Do we want to attempt the, to go in there with uh, this, either me or Alcoholic? Alex? I don't. Well, I don't see why we would need to pretend to be the thing. We can just say, "Man, we couldn't find it." 
she could she could uh be you know cautious if we come back and not have one with us she seemed pretty friendly my character says that we needed to like bring back the creature because that's what she wanted yes that's yeah, bring back the creature but we don't have to it's not like you asked me intact how are we gonna carry it how are we gonna move it I think one of us needs to disguise ourselves as this I would agree creature. With thought. It would so give us at least some kind of advantage in it. For uh, disadvantage rolls, right? And then uh, we can say, or Azaria can say that she has the amulet so that she can approach closest. Yes, yes, yes. And then like Gideon can use press the vegetation right. to like, make it look like the amulet's in her hand, and then allow... Wow. Prestidigitation doesn't create things. Um, no, I can use minor illusion. Yeah. I can eat. I can even use nature's wrath. Yeah, or just act like it's in your pocket. I mean, it worked pretty well for me. Okay. <laughs> All right, A team. We got the plan. Let's go. Okay. So you guys want to head back? Yeah, I love it. Gideon we'll stays get... back. <laughs> uh, have you guys head back? Um, Gideon stays back. Are you staying back, really? I said in the back, oh, as in, okay. if you're gonna do some sort of fucking party order, mine's near the so, end. Who, uh, we're, <laughs> right, we're, we're one of you. Before we, get, before we go, one sec. So, what are you using, Panda, to do this? So you're 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 the um. You're the construct. Yeah, you're gonna be the construct. What what? I use charisma. Uh, well. Oh. Because I have a spell I can cast. I want to cast an enhance ability on you. Yeah. Are we talk no, first of all, are we talking about this out loud together? Yeah. Okay. Sure. So if you're doing that, I wanna like help you do that. She's using minor cosplay ability? Yeah. I'm using cardboard laying around. Actually, you know what I can do. Use a, I'll like cast three D printer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, bolt. Enhanced three D printer. Yes. Flying bolt. <laughs> It's really nice. You'll you'll definitely win the Paxi cosplay contest. Hang on, um, Amanda. Do you have a, a high charisma? Yes, I have a very high charisma. So on my, uh, if I cast as a third level or higher, which I will do, I can target one additional creature, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll use Eagle Splendor to give you both advantage on whatever roles you use charisma based. That includes deception, perception, whatever's in that category. Not perception. Perception. Uh, deception. Are you gonna allow us, King? You gonna allow me to do disguise self? I should. Spell. Do what you want to okay. do. All right. Performance and persuasion. I can. I can only see him just because so I don't know. Anyways, I went in there and started blasting. <laughs> <laughs> or you can go in stealthy, whatever you can do. I can change my body type. I can change my height. Take a panda break. I'll be back in 15. <laughs> 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 I, no, I, I'm ready to go. Like, I can cast it. It lasts for an hour. Okay, so you want to you want to disguise yourself as this big construct? How tall did you say it was again? I have, I don't have a spec for it, but probably seven feet. Yeah, that make me. I can do up to one foot taller than what I'm at, and I'm at like five foot ten. So. So you're gonna be a little shorter than. I'll be two inches shorter than the actual construct. Okay. Yeah. Go Just so I'm not, yeah. Okay, so We're not a perfect replication of it, but passable. Okay. If and then whatever Adam was wanting to do, he was wanting to give me some kind of advantage on appearing. Who's my checks? Who's my check? You also have the plus three from Amanda. Okay. Yeah. Um. And I did a little a little makeup on your disguise self, so I don't know how that helps out. Whatever King will allow. I don't know what you're trying to buff up your charisma for, but I don't either, but it's it happened, so <laughs> 
it's gonna be her charisma that's gonna be the you know she's gonna she's gonna be inspecting you you're not gonna bluff your way out of it it's just how yeah. good your disguised self is you your charisma doesn't matter in that aspect what is the save on that it's like a this charisma, it's a uh, deception versus insight. This guy's safe. Ooh, DC blank. Oh, uh, they need to make an intelligence check against your spell save DC. Okay. Intelligence is good. Okay. Panda, what's your spell save? 16. Oh boy. Do I add a modifier to that now? But no, it's just a six. It's a, it should already be in there. Well, I mean, it's yeah, it's it's yeah. your your con, your your It's so. an action, but you still need the attack app uh, attack action to get the two attacks. But if you're doing a different action, well yeah, then. <sighs> What? So I have to do Oh, I know what I'm going to do. Okay. I have an idea. All right, everybody's back. Let's go. So, Adam, are you want to do some kind of advantage toward me with my disguise self? I already told you, like, anything you use charisma based, whatever uh, perception or intimidation or you know, um, persuasion, whatever. Perfect. Yeah, so get advantage on that, and so does Amanda. What? How much of an advantage? Oh, okay, just an advantage. Yeah, advantage. Okay. Yes. Second roll. Got it. Okay. So uh, let's see none this. of this stuff is going to affect your spell save DC. Just to let you know. That's fine. If you want to use your skills, that helps. If you want to use your spells, yes. then it does not. Yeah. What What I'm just saying is, like, you buffing up her charisma and stuff is not going to improve the disguise. The disguise, all the hag has to do is do an intelligence roll versus her spell save DC to see if it's real or fake. Oh, okay. So but the... I want to... Are, are we going to be... Are we about to approach? You can be, if you're okay. all set, ready to go. So wait, if that's the thing, I do not want to waste that spell. So. Yeah, because that's a third level spell. So, I mean, yeah, no. well, you, can, you can keep it on her and she can roll correctly right. on, like, deception as long as the hag doesn't come up to it and inspect it. Yeah, are we walking toward her? So... You can start, if you guys are ready to go, yeah. I'll right okay. up in there. Uh, walking toward her, okay, I'm so going as, to as do approach, hold up. a performance. As, hold up. Hold up. As you approach, um, the hag's going to be, sorry, Nanny is going to be sitting there um, playing uh, that same game that she is with the flesh golem. Um, and she stands up. <sighs> nope, no squeezing game. Her back's good. He cracked it. It's good. Um, so she, she she just won the game, ah, stands up, and uh, the golem takes a piece of flesh and, and throws it at her feet, and she stuffs it in her pocket. I would like to do a performance. I know she can't see it, but I want to, I'm going to roll a performance to walk the way that we would notice, that we noticed from walking when giving him a, a look him. So I'm going to walk in a more robotic manner uh, and I'm going to do a performance. This guy's self, that. does that change your physical attributes as well? Because, like, are you as heavy as the construct would be? Cause otherwise, it would just sound like a normal person. I am, and I have alter self, just saying. Oh, uh, okay. So uh, what I was thinking... You could change your body type. Yeah, let's do it then. Yeah, you can you can appear heavier than you are. So okay. yeah, you, it sounds like. What I was thinking about doing in, in the company of this is that if I had enough information about that soul that I talked to about their physical appearance, that I could appear oh. as that. Um. Yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't know what he looked like or anything. It's uh, like I said, it, was, it lost all its human yeah. nature. It was just there as an energy source. <laughs> Right, really. And it just happened to be the biggest, strongest guy, so it was a good soul. So, okay. um, all right. 
So you approach the hag. She just won her game. With you. You're walking, doing the robot dance. Kimmy stays by the back of the party. I'm walking in front of um, uh, <clears throat> Telco. As Does... I come back, I have uh, my iron form. <laughs> you're you're in your form. My iron Autobot form. form. Yeah. yeah. Autobots okay. roll out. <laughs> Okay. So, um, I, as we approach her, um, I just kind of say hello to her and, um, kind oh, of she's startled. Ah, I, I didn't expect you back so soon. You, you found my friend, yes? Um, yes. Um, actually, we found Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Shut up. Where is he? I turned around to tell her. Well, Chad, this bitch is blind. I forgot about that. She's blind? Oh. oh so yeah. she says, Vaughn, you there? She cups her ear. <laughs> Vaughn wouldn't reply unless she had the amulet, though, right? Yeah, right? Yeah. Um, yes and no. He, she created him. So she, he'd still respond to her, but he's not. he wouldn't take hands from her. She had... You're still breaking up. What'd you say? Sorry. Um, he create. She created him, so she'll res he'll respond to her, but won't take commands unless she has the amulet. Okay. Uh, Talika gives out a. Uh... And Vorn, did you hear Vorn's Vorn, Vorn's voice? Blah, 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 blah. Did you hear Vorn's voice at all? That you could. Did he say anything? Did he? So, or did oh. he make any noises? I, before, before, as, as Nanny Poo Poo is leaning forward, I'm just going to straight up use nature's raft on her, <laughs> and spectral vines will come out of the ground and ensnare her. So, Someone um, the ruse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow, that was fast. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Yep. Let's That's get in it. Um, All right. Well, as soon as she does that, I'm going to also use my tentacle. So, again. also must proceed on like strength or dexterity or be restrained and, and have to keep repeating saving throws. So, yourself. as you do that, um, your your vines come up and grab nothing. Yes. Um, it was an illusion, um, and you and you hear a cackle, <laughs> uh, and she's like, Trixie, Trixie, <laughs> and um, you see this creature come out from behind a uh, from behind the golem. Um, And she says, um, it's the hag. It's the hag. She says, you don't think I have spies? She says, I know you talked to her. Prepare to die. I'll consume your soul like I did the others. And then she turns. <laughs> I'll consume your flesh like you've never she, seen. She turns invisible, from what you can tell. Fairy fire. Um, <laughs> then, yeah. See. Yeah. So, so I'm going to use turn the faithless. And so, uh, Trying to get her to reveal herself as she's by an illusion or shape shifting. She already did. But she's invisible now. She's invisible, yeah. Okay. And so someone like her reveal herself. Yeah. It's it it, um, it makes her reveal her true form if she's concealed by an illusion, shape shifting, or other effect. Yeah. Well she already has though. That's she has to make a wisdom saving throw. Yeah, so what it is is like it's it's like uh like an AOE basically, like oh any creatures in this area, you have to reveal yourself to me if they don't make make the save. Right, they have to reveal their true form. They don't have to which, reveal which her, her, it would be her her uh, invisibility would be there. No, that's a different thing. So yeah. she has she has shape shifting. It's called illusionary appearance. And that's how she can make herself look like a normal person as opposed to a hag. And then she has Invisible Passage, which makes her invisible. Um, yeah, which is an illusion, illusion spell, correct? Um, I don't... It says the, the hag magically and turns invisible and she casts a spell or attacks. Or until her How concentration... close is she? I don't know. I'm not going to tell you <laughs> no. that. She's invisible. <laughs> I cast Fairy Fire. Okay. Make it easy. What's that do? Uh, each, oh, object I, 20, I each object in a 20... Each object in a 20... What's the distance is outlined in a blue, green, or violet light. Distance. Distance. 20 feet. 20 feet. We walked right up to her, didn't we? 
Yeah. So the so the golem oh, glows you know. blue. That's it. I want to attack the golem. Yep. Um, I'm gonna have everybody initiative. <laughs> don't we have? I'm so don't, we, don't we have like the jump on them? Or no? No, she takes no. the jump on you. Okay. Yeah, yep. the other way. Yeah. You said that she showed herself as the, this green tag and then disappeared. Yep. yep. Where was she as she disappeared? She was probably 40 feet away. She, she the, the illusion she made was that was right. You're breaking up. The illusion you, she made was the one that you wrapped up. But then she appeared as the green hag. Yeah, Where, how far she, was she away? She is out of distance of your fairy five. <laughs> okay. That's how that Say cookie. Twenty, not natural. So, sorry. Who's who's better on decks? I I guarantee it's the monk. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. I got an eight. I got seventeen. You'd be surprised, though. 14 for me. <laughs> I only have plus one. 16 okay, for Cal, um, okay. Gotcha. Six, 16 for you? Yeah, 16. Okay. Uh, Adam, you are what? Sorry, 14? Um, yes, 14. Solid, you are an eight. Correct. <laughs> All right, cool. Let's tango. <laughs> All right, so the hag is nowhere to be found. She is holding her action, uh, knowing that if she does anything, she's visible. Um, and so I'm going to have Robot go first. Flesh Golem has stood up, uh, and he is walking towards you, or lumbering towards you. He is probably 15 feet away. Okay, I'll uh, I'll go ahead and attack him. Okay. So I get a double attack. What are you using against him? I'm using a uh, quarter staff. Okay. Is it, what is that? Bludgeoning. Yeah, bludgeoning. Okay. So uh, I roll a six and a nine, and then I'm going to use uh, flurry. What is it called? Yeah, Flurry of Blows, which gives me two more unarmed yeah. attacks. Which is essentially the same thing. Okay. And those are claws. So they're uh, bleeding Slashing. attacks. Slashing. Slashing. Okay. So 15 on the first two, and then 11 on the second two. So he takes zero damage. <laughs> he, is, he is immune to bludgeoning and slashing damage. non magic And I look shocked. <laughs> You can you can cut him up, but it's, he's a hunk of flesh, not visibly. Okay. Oh wait, oh, yeah, only if they're non-magical, right? Correct. To make those bitches magical. Yeah. I don't. I'm not magical. I, think, I don't know if you add key to stuff if it makes it magical. I did add. Well, I had to use a key point for you the floor. Spend the key point, but I think you can do something with key to make your stuff magical. But uh, uh, yeah, uh, there is like a specific ability you take. Yeah. There's monk. There's monk shit that makes them magic. Someone's got. Someone has to have. Um, Amanda, I think you have an ability where you can turn uh, weapons into magical items, um, or act like magical items for like a minute. I... You're, you're welcome, by the way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hang on. Big damage. <laughs> so that is a key empowered strike. Your unarmed strikes count as magical. Oh, yeah, there you go. Um, resistance for immunity. So the eleven should count. Okay. So he takes eleven damage. Yeah. Yeah, he takes eleven damage. Okay. So your your second attacks land, um, and he kind of just shrugs it off. Next will be death. All right, um, Gideon. I will first attack with um. Chill touch. Um, I a spectral tentacle rises up out of the ground and wraps its way around him. Um, my attack roll is nineteen. Yep. Um, he takes two d eight damage. 
<laughs> this is this is what chill touch. Yeah, uh, I rolled um, a double one. Um, so <laughs> he takes uh, two damage. It's like, a, it's like just like it's like cold hands, like clammy hands. It's not, not as, yeah, but yeah. since he he's, did, he's like, oh, it did hit. Uh, on a hit, the target no. takes necrotic damage, and it can't regain hit points until the start of your next turn. Uh, the hand clings to it. Uh, if you hit an undead target, I don't know if he's undead, if he's classified as such, but if he is, construct. Um, then he would take disadvantage on his attack rolls. He's a construct. Um, I am also using a sorcerer's point to quicken uh, Mind Sliver <clears throat> um, and attack him at the same time with a, a spike of pain to his mind. Ooh. Okay. Um, Mind spine. He needs to make a intelligence fifteen save. Oh god! Yeah, he's super smart. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, intelligence fifteen save. Nope, he rolled a four. Okay. Um, <laughs> he takes <laughs> ten psychic damage. Yep. And um, uh, oh, wait one second. One second. Yep. I have to roll again. Um. He has magical resistance. Oh, damn. <laughs> um, so let's roll one more time. Oh, that was worse. He rolled, <laughs> he rolled a two, minus two, so that's a zero. <laughs> so okay. um, so he's a four. So yeah, that works. <laughs> he takes uh, ten psychic damage, and no. the next saving throw he makes, he has to roll a d4 and subtract it from the total. Okay. D4 minus. Um, and you did what? How much damage on the first one? Two. Two and then ten, so two and ten damage. Yeah, okay. and then I will uh, use my move to make sure the party is between me and him. Okay. <laughs> so next will be Amanda. Okay, um, I'm going to use um, Moonbeam. Okay. So um, I know he's going to have to do um, a, a con save. Okay. Or um, fourteen. Like that. Maybe. Yeah, that's cool. And then, uh, okay, let me roll. <laughs> no, you don't have to roll. I, I roll. No, so you don't have to miss. Yes, that's what? That's the party if anybody has a spell magic. From, and then you. Um, um, Moonbeam is uh, radiant damage, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. So he has to be an eighteen. Or fourteen. He has, said, right? 14. he has to be fourteen. Okay. And he has Actually, to take. Uh, he has to roll a twenty, not natural. Uh oh, so even the D4 isn't going to help. He has a plus four in con. Why? Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, it still does uh, half of whatever 2D12 damage that you do. 2D10. 2D10. Eight. So it still does eight, da eight radiant damage. Okay. <clears throat> Let's do Panda. Where are, we, where are we at in the uh, area? So, like, how far away are we from this golem? Uh, your closest party member is Death, and he's probably, what? No, it'd be what? Robot. Robot was the closest. He was right on top of him. Yeah, I was trying to make him sure I was the farthest away. Did he away. move up? Like, how much? Oh, you feet? He's put the like... party in between you and him, right? Yeah. So, I would say he is probably within 10 feet of the party. Okay. Uh, he was only 15 feet away at the beginning of the combat. Gotcha. And he moved up, so... Okay. Uh, my, my turn, I'm going to... move my full distance backward from the golem. Are you breaking your disguise self? Yeah, why not? You're, you're still disguised. Yeah, there's no point. Okay. Are you going to count that as... No, okay. I'm just, it just ends. Yeah, I'm going to break that, move back a full 20 feet. Yeah. Actually, as I'm moving back, I'm going to whip out my kalimba style instruments, do a little quick, uh, as I do that, I tap Amanda on the shoulder. And I see. You run behind. <laughs> yeah. I go, I'm like running and I go. <laughs> and she has uh, one 1d8 bardic inspiration die. 
uh, as a bonus, that's that's actually counted as my bonus action. I'm going to cast a spell of uh, True Strike. Okay. And just point at the balloon. And I don't have anything funny to say. Mark him for Venom. You're dead again. He, it goes right over his head. Yeah. And that's my turn. <laughs> I, true Strike is just like, I get advantage on um, attack rolls. Attack rolls. Yep. Uh, but that's my turn. Adam. Yes. Go ahead. So I want to move within five feet. Okay. You are in iron form, yes? Yes. Yes. Okay. I came to this as iron form. Yes. Um, I want to roll the hits for Thunderclap. Okay. Okay. That roll is a 16 natural plus, one sec, six. Yeah. That um, definitely hits. Thunderclap deals, let's see, in my level, 2d6. What is that for damage? Con save. Yeah, what kind of damage? What type that? of damage? You said, Which is magical, magical damage. I mean, it's like thunderclap is thunderclap is thunder damage. It is thunder yeah, damage. Okay, go thunder ahead. damage. I mean, yeah, no, go ahead. Do your roll. Sound damage, basically. Yeah. yeah. So four yeah, and six, so ten damage. But everyone within a yeah. hundred feet has to make a con save. Okay. What? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's the, same, that's the same spell I cast in the tunnel. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Okay. Including the hag, if she's within 100 feet. Oh, yes, I'm well aware. Okay. <laughs> I know what you're doing here. I know you're what saying. Sound, you're sending out the sounding. Yeah. All right, I'm good. 19. Okay. 18. It's a clap. You got the clap. 21, 24, non natural. 20. So my. Oh. Um, my save is so you got to beat um, my spell save of like uh, seventeen. Cool. So Hag just yeah. rolled a nat twenty to save him. God damn it! So I am not gonna have her be affected at all. Fuck that Hag. A D seventeen. Get her. Failed eighteen. Failed it. I saved. Nice. I have a second attack. Is everyone? How, much damage, how much damage was that? Ten. Yeah. Ten damage. Uh, so as you do that, you let out this thunderous clap. Mm -hmm. uh, the golem actually looks like he ingests that damage, and it does heal him instead of damage him. What? Flesh golems actually have lightning absorption, so any lightning damage. It's uh, thunder damage, not lightning damage. Thunder, not lightning. Oh my bad. Yeah, no, so he's not hurt normal. <laughs> a little bit of thunder, a little bit of lightning. It's like okay, sound but, damage, basically. But because you said that, I have a second attack, which is a lightning attack, and I will continue that. Okay. Because I don't know this information, right? Okay. Um, my second attack is uh, my gym, my chest glows, radiates uh, blue power. Um. My normal range is 90 feet. My long range is 300 feet, and he's right in front of me. Yes. And he deals uh, 1d6 damage on a hit. Yep. Um, yep. Let's see. And if it hits, I get another d6. Okay. So, let me roll to hit. Yep. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Got to play the roll. Um, that is a 17. Oh, yeah. Let me see what he absorbs twice. Four and nine. Okay. Total. Nine total. Four and five. Oh, nine total. Yeah, nine Excuse total. Excuse me. Okay. So, same thing. Sucks it up. Sucks up nine. Yeah. So he's hit for ten and sucks up nine. He can put a negative one on that. Right. Cool. That's Very good. So, we know not to do, do that. Do I see that, though? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, uh... By the way, King, he was, uh, he still has fairy fire on him. Yeah. 
So, uh, we all everybody needs to know. What's that? We all have advantage on our attacks. Yes. Yeah, he's glowing blue. Yeah. So just Excellent. remember that. Yeah, you guys remember that, not me. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying it out loud so everybody remembers you get advantage on your attack rolls. Uh, that's all good. Go ahead. All right. Uh, uh, how close was the nearest person to him? Five feet. Five feet. And who is that? That is Wabu Lapu. Oh, whoops. Wabu. Well, uh, so a giant 20 foot sphere of pure black appears where this flesh golem is. 20 foot tall or? 20 diameter? foot radius sphere. Radius so of 40 foot. foot. 40 foot di diameter, yeah. That's going to hit everybody. Uh, if Yeah, if you're in there, yeah. If you're, if you're with it. Well, he was 15 feet away from the whole group when he started. Moved within 10 feet. So it's going to hit everybody. I moved 20 feet back away from it, though. You you did? I did. So you you're won't do this. 30 feet away. I thought I was only going to hit like one, per, one or two people. No, I'm not going to do it then. Okay. I don't want to do that because I don't want to fucking <laughs> kill everybody. <laughs> and we house them there right on top. Yeah, probably not a good idea. All right, well. Just uh, throw an Eldritch Blast at him. Yeah. Uh, so it's a ranged spell attack. I get to actually roll is that for this type of shit. No, that's what is that? No, it's force damage. Four. Uh, so I rolled a twenty-three to hit. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. You hit so, him. You hit him like two and a half times over. Two so. d <laughs> ten force damage. Plus I add my charisma modifier into this, so it's twelve plus four, so sixteen. Sixteen damage. Correct. Force damage. And then I'm gonna move back as far as possible from this motherfucker. Okay. So whatever your movement is. Yeah, like thirty feet. Okay. So Make sure I'm now, not getting flanked by no one. It is now the golem's turn. And he is going to attack Wabu right in front of him. Um so I'm gonna roll to hit. He's gonna make two slam attack. And let's do a 19 and a 23. Robot, those both hit? Robot, 19, 23. They both hit. Remember, I've or 19 and 23. What were you rolling against? Oh, shit. I should have oh, taken out a fucking. Uh, is it by strength or technical. armor class? It's attack roll against your armor. Oh, armor class. Uh, it's I'm 17. So, yeah, so both hit. I have four. Um, all right, so let's do some damage. Yeah, what's your aura going to do? So that hits you for 26 damage. No, that's good. That sounds ouchy. Yeah, yeah. It's hard. Wait a sec, wait a sec. And that's just a melee attack. My tentacles might help, be able to help. Hold on. I'm pretty much done with this, so <laughs> let's keep going. <Yeah. laughs> Yeah, I can defend other people. Just willy-nilly? Uh, reduce the damage of the chosen creature to half. Uh, by doing so, my tentacle gets destroyed. But You can just do that anytime during the fight, whenever. Well, it's just a bonus action. Yeah, it's not your turn, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, what would be the point of that if it wasn't... If it was just a bonus attack it and you're defending... Damage. Okay, for him. Reduce damage for... He basically, he basically he uses his bonus. If you have a tank in front of you that's going to take damage, you can use your bonus action to shield them for a little bit. Gotcha. So yeah. you're, you're basically giving him a little shield. But it's not Solid's turn, so he takes 26 damage. 26. Yikes. That wasn't a magic attack, right? That was a straight-up meat flesh hitting your okay. body. Yep. Just making sure. All right. So... That happens. Um, as that happens, the um, hag appears, probably 75 feet away, uh, and she lets out a horn. And um, a very large terra folk flies in, uh, looking like the king. That's the, the pterodactyl, the pterodactyl, the pterodactyl guy pterodactyl that we saw. It's in chat. So, uh, pterodactyl, yep, yeah, pterodactyl. 
<laughs> yeah, not, not like terror, like ground. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So, Mother uh, Earth. Yep. Um, so. <laughs> Terrafolk flies in. Um, and so the hag has decloaked herself. She's now visible. Uh, but the Terrafolk flies in and um, is going to make a dive at. Who. Let's see. It's going to make a dive at Amanda. Okay. <laughs> and let's do. All right. So I'm going to roll to hit against you. Nineteen. That's your armor class. Wait. Well, I don't think we updated that. Does 19 hit? Hold on. I think we did it right. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so you definitely hit her. Okay. Yeah. So, as this Terrafo dives in, uh, it actually swoops by and hits you with its javelin. Um, <laughs> and you take nine damage. Okay. Uh, you are also frightened until the end of its next turn. So you are now frightened of this Terra fella. So she needs to move okay. her full distance, right? She... Oh, her turn. So Not that second, no. When you're, when you're frightened... Uh, you gain disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls while the Terrafog is still in your sight, and you cannot willingly move closer to the source of your fear, so the Terrafog. So you don't you don't have to move away. You cannot go closer, and you have disadvantage on attack. Ooh. That is frightened for you. Okay, okay. So, and then he will also swoop past and then strike... Um, Death. Oh. Mm. I tried to at least. Oops. With a twenty. Jesus. Okay. To hit. Was, yeah, twenty to hit. Uh, yeah. Not fucking around. And. Hit you for nine damage as well, um, but not the frightening effect. And as after he hits you, swoops back up. Uh, he is thirty feet in the air, kind of hovering, um, thirty feet above, about the same height, uh, like distance as you guys, just thirty feet above you. And okay. we'll go back to the top of the order to a robot. Use them fists. I will. Uh, leap back. Leap. And then I will enter into shell defense. You are going to provoke an opportunity attack. Attack of opportunity. Is that because I moved? Or yeah. because yeah. I took an action? No, because you're moving out of melee range with something. Okay, fair enough. You. Yep. So if you, if you want that, I can do that. Yeah. That's what I was going to do anyway. Okay, so, so you jump out of the way. He gets an opportunity it. attack against you. Um, so it's just gonna be one slam attack, it's not gonna be multi attack. And he rolled a. No, not great. He rolled a. 17. I'm a 17. So Ty goes Ty to goes the. Fender. Fender, yeah. Fender. So he will strike you, but it actually just propels you back. So go an extra five feet from where you're gonna land. <laughs> Okay. And then I will enter into uh, shell defense, which basically means I just get inside my shell. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I'm picturing this in my mind. Blast like, those use withdraw. Yeah. I just see. Exodus for street, Millie. Yeah. Until, I can be, and, and, like, until I can be healed, I am fucking useless. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing that didn't hit you because that was another 13. 
Yeah, that would have been it. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so next will be death. All right. Um, TPK, right? So, yeah, yeah, I'm this, my, this guy doesn't fuck around. I, uh, I'm mind sliver of the... Uh, I'm mind sliver of the Pteranon, or Terra folk person. Yep. Um, he needs to make an intelligence 15. Oh, God. That's not good. All right. Um, intelligence 15. He doesn't do that. Okay. Um... He takes seven psychic damage and he gets uh, minus one d4 to his next save. Nice. And then I immediately quicken uh, dissonant whispers at level three. Um, now he has to make a wisdom 15 save with a minus one d4. God damn. All right. Um, so the one d4 will be a three. And he will hold oh uh, He'll roll a nine. Okay. Um, I whisper a discordant melody that only one creature of my choice can, within range can hear, uh, racking it with terrible pain. Uh, the creature, if he fails a uh, save, takes 5d6 damage. Oh! <laughs> uh, I rolled horrifyingly bad. Um, he takes 10 psychic damage. Um, what is this? Dissonant Whispers. Um, <laughs> oh, nice. Isn't that nice? Uh, on a failed save, he takes that much damage and must immediately use its reaction, if able, to move as far as its speed allows away from me. Uh, the creature doesn't move, obviously, into dangerous ground, such as a fire or a pit. Um, and... Let's see. Yeah, so basically it has to fly away from me, and it just so took a bunch of damage. Set a, he set a big owie, and he shoots 50 feet away. Um, so now he is 80 feet away from you. Um, was that the, the golem or the... That was the pterodactyl. The pterodactyl thing that keeps swooping down on us. Ridley. Yep. Ridley? Ridley from Metroid. From Metroid. Yeah. Um, and I can't do any healing, so I'm sorry. Wobble. But... Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, let's do. Are you done? Yeah, I just keep. I make sure to keep the party once again between me and the fucking gold. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I bet one of his attacks probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, Amanda, go ahead. So if I move back, can I get on um, next, like, right in touch distance of Wabu? Yeah. Okay, He's... I'm gonna. Do... What, how far did you go back? Robot? Um, I'd say 15 feet. So he's oh, back yeah. he's 20 feet yeah. behind you. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna use, um, your... Uh, what? I said, yeah, you could move that far, yeah. Sure. Okay. Oh, yeah, right. you're good. Um, yeah. I'm gonna use Cure Wounds. Shoot. So, um, I'm going to do a D8 plus my spellcasting ability. Okay. Do you reach your I hand got... inside the shell, or do you, like, rub the shell up top? Yeah, what part are you healing? Um, <laughs> this, is Im- this is important. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh gosh. Reach up right into his little shell. Grab his weird turtle ankles. Just yeah. touch the top oh. of the shell. Have you seen, seen the uh, turtle hump oh. shoe? <laughs> his tankles? Gently. Tankle it. So I got um, a 7 plus my 6. So yeah. 13. Good. All right. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so is that what we're doing? Yep. Okay, cool. Let's go to Panda. I first I need to ask you well no, I'm not gonna ask you that first. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I am going to use Counter Charm. It's one action. Everybody in 30 feet of me has advantage on saving throws against being frightened or charmed. Okay. Good so job. everybody in 30 feet from me. And then how far am I away from water? 20 feet. 20 feet? Uh, 
Are you out of your shell now? Uh, it's not. I'm gonna turn. pop out of my shell my next turn. So you're still in it. I'm still in my shell. I'm just I... a giant rock sitting on the ground. That's my saying. Owie. Perfect. Okay. I got I'm gonna run 20 feet, 20 feet up to him, and out of my little satchel, I pull out one egg, and I ah. slip it under his turtle under under his turtle belly, and I I whisper, "Eat this when you get out of there." And then I sprint 10 feet back. You did while you're in there. Yeah, you, you just put, put, it, put it, in. it in the shell. You know where my hole is at. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My hole. You know his hole. <laughs> Don't act. Make sure you put he's, it in the face. Dude, I hope he's got more than four. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I drop it in the face hole. <laughs> she puts it in the wrong hole. Uh, <laughs> oh, God damn but it, it works. Man, it's a uh, I walk over to a robot and I have like a little <laughs> smashy thing. And as soon as like something pops out of the hole, I whack it. Yeah. Whack it. So. Play the whack a hole? With, with what? Oh, you got your, your metal arms. That's right. So, Wadu, you, you need to you. Totally eat that. Eat that, and then you need to roll a uh, two d six. Two d six. Cool. <laughs> All right. What'd you get? Oh, well, I thought I couldn't do it until it's my turn, but I'll do it. No, uh, 10. You do it now. 10. 10. That's good. You get 10 hit points back. Nice. Excellent. Cool. Very nice. Thank you. Good, good heals, chicken. <laughs> I disbelieve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I believe. I believe. All right. Uh, that's my go. Are you good, Panda? Yeah. Adam. Go. Remember, everybody gets advantage on counter and fighting and shit. Gets the manager, what? You get right. you get advantage rules on uh, saving throws against against being charmed or frightened. Okay. Um, can I see the hack? You can. All right. So I cast firebolt on the hack. How how far away is she? She is seventy five feet away. All right. So yeah, firebolt I think it's what you said. is one twenty. Yeah, you can hit her. So I rolled a hit. Um, that's seventeen plus. Six. Twenty-three. Hits her. Can I picture this as you just doing something like um, something like this? Like, like, at this level, it's two d ten. Nice. I rolled a two. Hold <laughs> up. I rolled the wrong dice. That's eleven. That's not right. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, All right, here we go. Right, redo. Yep. Uh, nine. Yep. Eight. Cool. Seventeen. Seventeen. Nice. Firebolt on the hag, and I get a second attack. Nice. With lightning. Don't do it on the golem. No, on the hag. I know. I'm just. <laughs> fun. So, um, I do. Um, do we reroll? To hit? Yeah. Of course. I mean, of course. It's a second attack, isn't it? You miss it. Twenty-three. That's still yeah, definitely hits. <laughs> yeah. And that's two d six. Two. Nice. And four, so six total. Excellent. Good that's light, damage. lightning damage. Yep. Okay. Yep. She has no. And I'll stay right with that. That's my turn. Excellent. All right, next will be Colin. Okay, I'm going to uh, have her make a deck saving throw. Okay. The old hag. The old hag. Uh, she rolled a 17. All right, so she'll still take half damage of 8d6. Good. Now, lightning bolt. Lightning bolt. Um, 8d6. So she'll take 14 lightning damage. Okay. From that. And as a bonus action, I have my tentacle up in like kind of the. within 10 feet of most of the people that are battling this fucking flush golem. Uh. 
That's my attack. That's my turn. Excellent. All right, next will be the golem. Um, Dev, I think you are actually the... No, you're the furthest. Uh, closest yeah. would be... Any... So I think Adam might be the closest, or Amanda. No, Amanda went to go help Wabu. Uh, so it's either Solid or Adam, correct? No, I am nowhere near these. I'm five, five feet away from the golem. golem. Okay, so he attacks you. Okay. So, let's see. He rolls a to hit. Oh, 25 to hit. Oh, fuck. Of course he is. Yeah, that's an 18 plus 7. Jesus. So, I see it's 18. So. Is, it, is it magical or is it. It's physical? a regular. He's, He's slamming hitting you. you with dead okay. fist. All right. Yeah, uh, so that takes 26 damage. Motherfucker. Really? It's the same as Wabu got hit with. Yep. It hurts. Could have been more. I'm taking I'm taking the average roll. That's fine. I mean, yeah, you want to kill me? Kill me. That's fine. <laughs> That's Session fine. over. <laughs> We're done. Good night. <laughs> uh, so he comes down with both fists. Slams into you, 26 damage. Does it like um, knock me prone or something? Like, something got knocked back, right? Uh, robot was jumping back while the attack uh, of opportunity happened, and his AC tied. So I just put. But okay, all right. So yeah, no, it's just he just pummels you. All right. All right. Um. Luck. Next, next will be the Terra folk, which somebody did a debuff on him, right? Uh, that was. I, I mean. Yeah, go ahead. I hit him with the dissonant whispers, and um, he forced him away. But um, I don't think it leaves any debuff on him. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Well, I cast. My cast it goes toward saving against his frightening. Saving against his frightening. Okay, so he is going to a javelin at Panda. With a thirteen to hit. That matches my armor class. Okay, so you defend. So it'll just graze past you. Yeah. Um, and he will also do another th against you as well. <laughs> awesome. That is a 16 to hit. That hits. Okay. So he will hit you with nine damage of piercing damage. Okay. And next will be the hag. She will Sick. cast vicious mockery. Oh no. Damn it. <laughs> And she will cast it at Oh she is. Yeah, she she just two D forty damage. Okay. So uh yeah, vicious mockery. Solid. Uh nope, actually sorry, it is um not solid. She actually has to move up thirty feet. And then use it against death. Fuck so you're too far away. Um, so she unleashes a string of insults. Um, you need to make a wisdom saving throw. Sixteen. Is her spell safe? It'll just be like right where the spells are in the monster block. Yeah, it's not there. Passive perceptions there. What is it? Just a night hag? All right. Uh, it's a green hag. Green hag? Yeah. Everything I'm seeing is 14, so I'm gonna go with that. So. That's probably what it is. So. Yeah. Are you looking it up on roll 20? I'm on uh, D&D Beyond. Okay. 
Um, so yeah, so it's a 14. You, you did a what, 16? Uh, yeah, I rolled a 16. Her spell save DC is 12. Oh. I see what you're... Oh, yeah, no, her vicious mockery is 12. Yeah, okay, so you've morphed. Okay, no, her intimidations... Uh, imitation, excuse me, is 14. Uh, it's 12, yeah, so she definitely misses with that. Um... I, I laugh at her. It literally just misses. <laughs> uh, so, uh, after that, she will uh, go invisible again. And it is Robot's turn. <sighs> Turtle, Turtle power! power! Probably gonna die. Turtle power. I'm gonna pop out of my shell. I don't think so. And uh, then go attack the golem. Okay. Wise choice. And <laughs> I am... Wise choice. Yeah. I am going to use Stunning Strike. Nice. I'm going to use one key point. Okay. And, uh... Let's see. How does this work? All right. I'll roll. 17. Is that hit? Oh, yeah. Nice. Okay, so what this does when you hit with a melee attack, I spend one key point. The target's stunned until the next turn if it fails a con save throw. So do a con save. What's your DC, robot? 14. That's what the, like, uh... Proficiency? On my... It, uh, it, let's see... Uh, he only rolled. Uh, that's I don't know if saving throws is no, for me. No, I have a... good. You're good. <laughs> yeah, I only rolled. Okay. Nine. You're fine. Okay, so to the uh, until my next turn, you're stunned, and I think you're actually prone. Yeah, you're just stunned until the next turn. Okay. Until the, his the, uh, until my next turn. Gone. It's called stunning strike. I interfered with the flow of his key. <laughs> Whatever's there. Your key. Whatever's there, yeah. Your key. I'm the key master. I'm the gatekeeper. Oh, that's my dude right there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Who's turn? Hush up, Who's Gozer. Turn? Oh, this guy knows. Anybody else? No? There is no better <laughs> than there is only Zool. Oh, <laughs> nice, nice. Next. Oh, you fucking won the whole damn thing with that. Next will be. Uh, yeah. There is only Zool. <laughs> I got an awesome song. Did you say it was my turn? Death, yes. Death. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Gideon uh, can uh, basic. Uh, the more he's casting these spells, the brighter and brighter his eyes are glowing. Um, just kind of like a, a spectral white blue from underneath his hood. And uh, tendrils are writhing underneath his uh, his robes. And um, this time he, he turns his attention to the... Uh, well, he'll look at the... the how far away is the... the whatchamacallit? The, the teardown again? He is uh, 80 feet away. He was 30 feet up and then was pushed back 50 feet. Right. Right, right, right. I think I'm going to uh, chill touch him. Uh, I kind of raise my, my tendril into the air and one appears around him. And I got a roll a two hit. 20, not natural. Oh, yeah. Uh, 2 e 8. 12 damage. And. Um. He. Oh, it's not. It's necrotic damage. You actually kill him. What? He is very weak. Yeah, I mean, I've hit him several times. <laughs> you kill him? Yeah. The pterodactyls just drops dead out of the sky. <laughs> With the sound I, of the I, I, I yell so and <laughs> yeah, 
I yell in a, uh, as <laughs> commanding a voice as I can. Death. Come, woman. Face me. Doesn't it land beak first where it just kind of sticks and like... Like a, like a lawn Does dart. Does it sound? <laughs> yeah, like a lawn dart. <laughs> like an old Warner Brothers cartoon? Yep. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Yep. Alright, so you say, like, come on and face me? Mm-hmm. You want to roll for that? I mean, if King wants me to, basically it's just for flair. I want that bitch to show herself so I can rip her mind apart. Yeah, I like flair. Um, what do you want? Intimidation? Persuasion? I mean, intimidation. Oh, yeah, here we go. 24. Oh! Yeah, I have plus 7 in intimidation and plus 10 in persuasion, so... Plus 3 from Amanda. And plus 3 from Amanda, so that's, uh, 27 total. Hold on. Hold on. He is very intimidating. It actually was close when you think, but it still hit. It does hit. She actually rolled really well. <laughs> Roll the 19 and has a plus 6, so. So does she? Does uh, she no, she doesn't it? say. She's intimidated. So do what, you, do what you want there. So she appears? Um, Out of what invisibility? Are you, what, are you, what are you saying? I said show yourself and face me. Yeah. Uh, yep, she will decloak. Oh, uh, she, oh, yeah. Here we go. She, she is up on a ridge, probably 50 feet away. Um, and she just lets out a scream. <laughs> yeah, that great. Tendrils writhe from all the openings in my robe, and my eyes are yeah. smoking blue lights. Squiggly. Awesome. On a message, uh, get in and say, thank you, my friend. Kill her. Kill her dead. I will. And I'll eat her. <laughs> um, yes, I'm gonna do it. All right. <laughs> um, next, uh, next will be Amanda. <laughs> Wait, did you? Oh yeah, that's right. I go after Amanda. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm you. going to, I'm going to use Moonbeam on her. Okay. Okay, let me see. <coughs> so she just has to um make a con throw. Con save. All right. Okay. So she will. Con will be wow. Uh, that is a con two. catch. A two. What you get? Plus three, so five total. Ah, bitch. Uh, yeah, she has to beat fourteen. Uh, she didn't do that. Okay. Not do that. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> I'm having sea tag for dinner, baby. Some sometimes those dice are rolling in your favor, sometimes <laughs> they are not. <laughs> a seven and a one. That's it. Oh, that's it? Yeah, I rolled a one and a six, so oh, it's a seven. Seven radiant damage, nice. Yep. No, yeah. she's hurt so bad. She's like, Ugh. Yeah, she's dead. No, I'm just kidding. No, she's <laughs> <laughs> it does it does hit her. Um, <laughs> So now she has to stay in her true, which is this one. She wasn't changing. I mean, hey, don't forget about that bardic inspiration die. Right, but she's not she able to go. And... <laughs> yeah, you don't need it. Well, you can do it on attack rolls too. Yeah, you can use it on attack rolls. Yeah, Wait, bardic so inspiration so is attack rolls. Well. You, you already have it. You don't need to keep it there. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's not for damage. It's just a hit or a uh, save. Yeah. Uh, again. Um, so you yeah, you get to, oh, no, you didn't take the attack action. She get, she has two attacks, but she has to take the attack action to get both of them. Then yeah, it's, it's with a, a weapon. Yeah, oh, yeah, physically yeah. attack, not cast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Uh, hand is next. Uh, I am going to... Uh, hold on a second. What? Okay. You just said hand is next. You said, hold on. Yeah, yeah, but I had an idea. So, okay. as you're getting ready for your attack... Or whatever you're gonna do, um, the hag lets out another scream, uh, and you hear a witch. you hear a shuffling oh, in a God. cave that's next to you. Good. There's a miraculously a cave next to me. The, yeah. The, this fucking cave cave's everywhere. Um, a so cave. out, out of cave. out out of the cave comes this vile critter. 
No. <laughs> I leave. It's got big snarly teeth. Yeah. Um, and it posts up in a defensive posture in between and the golem and the hag. The fuck is that a bunny? That's a bunny. It's a unibunny, a, dude. That's a unibunny. It's a bunny yeah. with a fucking horn on it. It is it is my anti creature. It's an <laughs> Almirage. My pig fucks it. Can I roll to fuck it with my pig? So this <laughs> bunny is four and a half feet tall. Oh no, my pig's uh, really like horn feet. the horn itself is about a foot long. Um and it weighs like 150 pounds. It's a big bunny. Jesus and Christ. it's it's positioning between you and the enemies. Like Sn- snarling cutely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's got big snarly fangs. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it launches at your neck and just oh, <laughs> 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 So, the only hand of the day of Antioch! So, do you get an opportunity bet- of attack? No. <laughs> no. This cute little critter. <laughs> cute little critter is between you and it's just snarling right now. But Okay, is it my turn? Yeah. Okay. I got it. I'll be right back. How far is Adam away from me? What'd you uh, say? I don't know. He's right next to the golem and you're, you went back to help Wab. It was probably 10 feet, 15 feet. Okay. Uh, I'm going to move 15 feet to him. Mm-hmm. To right behind him. Mm-hmm. I'm going to... Oh, shit. That was nice. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> <laughs> and... When, uh, the train comes in, Mr. Rogers? Yes. Uh, <laughs> that is that sound. <laughs> I'm going to cast... Uh, healing word... Third level. Nice. On Shabazz. That's that's Adam's reaction in game too when he hears that. What the hell was that? Yeah. <laughs> and then he, he was rejuvenated. And I just the hell was that? actually I look at him. I go and then put my hand back here <coughs> and I pull out an egg. Oh, and I say, I know you're hungry. Open my mouth. <laughs> I, I, I drop it. Here. I drop it in his mouth. Put it down, um, I got it. And so you can hear the drool actually hitting the ground. <laughs> Splattering. Like Homer Simpson style. Oh. Right, so, here, I'm going to do... I think I do the rolls for you. Yeah. So 2d6. It's actually 3, because it's I'm going to cast on third level. Nice. With the egg, though? No, not yet. Tim. I did healing word for... 12 points. Oh, and then Adam Adam rolls 2d6 for the egg. Did so I say the egg was a bonus action? First? You did not specify if it was a bonus You're action. You're not doing both of them. Get out of here. Okay. Then I'll, I, take the, I'll, I'll take the 45. You're like, yeah, give me the 12. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. I. You can have the 12, I'll keep the egg. Then we'll skip yeah. all that shit. You can't, I, I'm not. Yeah. I mean, you can't say. double stack heals. Yeah. Okay, uh, then I won't use it. I'll be feeding him the egg. I'll take 12. I'm mean, at 45. Okay. Points. I keep the egg. I'm going to 15 feet back. Is it my turn? It is yes. your turn. Can I see the hag still? You can. Ooh, nat 20 plus 6. Excellent. Um, and that is a 2d10. 3. And a 7. And what is this? Firebolt. Firebolt. I am... Um, uh, okay, yeah, I'll just do it. Go ahead. So... So seven damage total? Seven damage. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah. yeah. All right. I guess second attack, though. The second lightning attack. I was going to have the bunny jump in front of it, but. <laughs> I mean, natural 20, do whatever you want. Oh, no, it's your natural 20. You can do whatever you want. I don't know, like. Oh. Just tell me what you want to do. It's your nat 20. Um... I will let you. All right, let's do this. The can bunny. It, can it, like, grease? When, the, when the fire hits her, can it, like, grease her and, like, put her in, like, 
Um, difficult terrain. Let's do this. Grease fire. Let's do this. <laughs> I will. <laughs> okay, perfect. I will. The bunny is going to try and protect its owner. Okay. It's going to hop, jump, and your firebolt sizzles through the center of this rabbit and kills it. And the poor little rabbit <laughs> flumps on the ground. What the? As as you do so, the entrails from the bunny explode out and hit the hag. And the viscous <laughs> grease from the entrails coats the hag. So you hit. Uh, Sure. It catches on fire, uh, doing additional six damage. Okay. I have another attack of lightning. But All right, hold on. That was 13 damage total, right? Yes. Okay. But because I have an additional attack, thank you for what you did. Um, yep. I want to forgo that attack. Yep. And eat that bunny for full health. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. So I, I negate I, my bonus I, attack. I, I didn't plan on putting the bunny in here. I just want to see if you guys. Well, I'm, I'm like I'm, I'm bouncing off you, okay? Okay. And so you put the bunny in my way. I killed it because you yeah. said so. Go ahead. I'm gonna like stop my bonus attack and just like eat that bunny for full health back to. So back what to I'll do you. is I'll have you prepare your attack. You send a firebolt out. Bunny jumps up, kills it, hits the hag, catches it on fire, and you want to launch another attack, but your eyes drop down yeah. and the sizzles in your hand. And you just lick your lips. I can't even. I can't even. Right? No, it's like I don't need that money. You uh, dive into it. That's it. not sizzling his hand. It sizzles in his. In the. <laughs> in my breath. Where, oh, I have hands. Where, I'm he's got hands. He's in his arm. Yeah. And um. Right. And hey. so yeah, you can dive right into the bunny. <laughs> ah, la, 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 la. Ah, la, la. I eat that bunny up, <laughs> and I get full health, back to fifty-seven. Not to uh, um be a jerk or anything, but I'm going to repost that cute little bunny that you just <laughs> annihilated <laughs> and ate. So that cute little can pick your teeth with his horn. Yeah, you can. <clears throat> and also in that, while I'm eating, I'll forgo my next turn. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. Cause if you want to just continue. Cause yeah, you, right. you haven't eaten That's in a while. So he's not lobster. Uh, you don't eat the lobster. Eat oh, a whole fucking clean Whatever, dude's I'm hungry. hungry as fuck. <laughs> yeah, he's hungry. Yeah, There's a reason he's a 300 pound blob. 300, yeah, more than that. <laughs> um, Way more. Right. Well, I'm back to a tiny pig. <laughs> so I'll talk. Okay. Oh my god. It's <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Alright, good luck, guys. I'll see you in two turns. Solid's up. Alright, so the egg is obviously still alive. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Alright, so I'm gonna hit her with lightning bolt again. Uh, she needs to be dex saving throw. Mm -hmm. Twenty not natural. Okay, cool. So she takes half this damage. Adam killed a little bunny. <laughs> Ate it. So she takes 12 damage. Lightning okay. damage. Nice. Um, yeah, my little tentacle's still out there doing nothing. Just chilling. Um, Alright, that's it. Okay. Uh, so next will be the golem. Um, is the stunned thing. Yes. Is yeah. it your turn that he gets back up on? Yes, it's on my turn. Okay, so he's stunned right now. Um, so next will actually be the hag. And she is going to run 30 feet back. No, sorry, forward. Uh, so she's within 30 feet of you. And cast Vicious Mockery again. On... Robot. This bitch knows she can't hurt me. So go ahead and do a Wisdom save. 
Okay. Be a 12. Well, uh, natural 13. And oh, then uh, <laughs> 16 total. So it fails on you. Um, and then she will make a melee attack. I thought she was 30 feet away. Yeah, she is. Sorry. Never mind. Whew. Yep. So that is that is actually... She's going to go... She's going to go invisible again. Bitch. She's scared. So next will be Robot. Okay. Since someone really attacked the golem, I'm going to redo that same attack to try to keep the golem stunned. I'm just picturing a turtle doing the fucking... Stun lock. The Bruce Lee fucking... (laughs) (laughs) He's actually just falcon. Well, I can't see, and I have no way to see the, the hag. Actually, I take that back. I'm 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 gonna go ahead and do well. No, yeah, I'll do the stunning strike, which is two, um, two d six plus three, eight. And I didn't do it right last time, so I rolled an eight and a six for. Oh, do I have to roll for attack first? Okay. Yep. And then. Okay, twelve. Would this be dex? Would be my modifier on this? Uh, so or strength? Arms to hit, so it's probably strength. Okay. So it's 16. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then my two attacks are 6 and 5. They're open-handed key attacks. I'm using a key point. Okay. For stunning strike. So. And you have to survive another con save throw. 14. Con save. Well, hopefully it's better than the last one. It is. Hold on. Oh yeah, 21. Okay. So you're not stunned anymore, but you took 11 damage. Okay. Nice. So he regains control of his body after getting punched in the gut a couple times. Oh. And it will be Death's turn. All right. Well, even if the bitch is invisible, um, I know where she was. Is she invisible? And she did go invisible. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Uh, centered on her, I open up a portal to the fucking the deep. Um, <laughs> a portal to the fucking the deep. Uh. I'm, I mean, I'm using Hunger of Hadar, but instead of the, the star flavor, it's uh, the deep flavor. Um, the deep so shout. Mm-hmm. So it's a 40-foot diameter sphere of blackness. Um, so it should reach up to right in front of the party. May even clip the gun, who knows. But um, it's a sphere of blackness and bitter cold centered on the point within range uh, that lasts for up to a minute. Um... This void is filled with a cacophony of soft whispers and slurping noises that can be heard heard up to 30 feet away. Uh, No magical, no light magical otherwise can illuminate the area. Creatures within are fully, are fully within and are blinded. Um, The void, the void creates a warp in the fabric of space time and the area is difficult terrain. Any creature that starts its turn in the area takes 2d6 cold damage. Any creature that ends its turn in the area must succeed in a dexterity saving throw or take a 2d6 acid damage. Jesus Christ. Jesus, yeah. So it's just a bad, bad no no. Yeah, it's a really, really horrible place to be. Yeah, that's why I didn't want to cast it the very first turn because you guys were. Yeah, no, I figured that's what you were. I, was, I looked at it and I was like, no, nah, they're way too close. <laughs> uh, so she's got a. I mean, nothing happens immediately, but. um. It's waiting. Yeah, it's all there. <laughs> and it's horrifying. Okay. Are you good? Yeah, yeah, I think I'm good. Is she in that now? Or... Yeah. She's partying in there. Okay. Um, Amanda. Amanda. 
Amanda. What are you doing? Well, yeah, sorry. Um, just uh, um, let's see here. I'm kind of used my spells that are it's like the um. Pretty sure your attacks are counted as magical damage as a paladin. <laughs> yeah, but, aren't they? I I don't know. Do you have a magical weapon? No. Mm -hmm. I have a long sword. So probably not. Um. Wait. Unless you do like the radiant sword, whatever it's called, that you can make your sword do radiant okay. damage. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't have it. I used my like um, spells that would affect either of them right now. Yeah. So I'm just gonna um, chill where I'm at. Yep. That's a viable thing. Defense up. Yes. Okay. I need to heal people. <laughs> Perfect. All right, Panda. Where's the golem located? And like, how many people are close to it right now? Or, and how close is everybody? Would you say? Uh, just Wabu. I'm pretty sure. Everybody else is like 10, 15 feet back. Yeah, I am. Fifteen feet or more. Wabu's the only one that was in melee range. Mm. Adam may be closer because he's at freaking uh, he was even right. on the bunny. So, yeah, Adam could be within like seven feet of him. Okay. <laughs> This is what we do. Um, using my full 30 feet speed, I'm going to sprint past Wabu and Amanda. I'm going to do a little. And I'm casting Heroism at second level. Heroism is any creature you touch is imbued with bravery until the spell ends. The creature is immune to being frightened and gains temporary hit points equal to your spell casting ability modifier. Nice. So, <clears throat> spell casting ability modifier is. So they each get eight extra hit points. No, spell casting. No, five additional hit points each. Okay. So they just they get an extra five hit points attached to the, their total hit points. Nice. And I'm gonna stop my sprint right back where I started. Okay, gotcha. I'm using my thirty my th full thirty feet distance. No, 15, then, feet, fifteen feet. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's cool. Um, so we're gonna skip Adam because he's evil, and we're gonna go to Solid. All right. Uh, fuck, I can't see into that goddamn thing anymore. Correct. No. <laughs> so I can't really throw one out fast at it. We still got the golem right here, though. Yeah, isn't the golem in the uh, the hunger? No. No. Oh, no, he's not. Okay, never mind. I'm gonna. He's just running right, right outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, actually, let's see. <laughs> Push him into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's only like what? He's probably. He's probably like five feet away from. Him. He's on the edge. Spartan kick. <laughs> <laughs> all of his five strength. <laughs> yeah, with all of my strength. I'd love that. to see you plant your foot in there. Is, there is like a, a <laughs> freaking <laughs> thing that the uh, Force 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 Force. can do where it pushes people with their Eldritch Blast, but just cast the ghost on it. Yeah, I, don't, I didn't take that uh, invocation. I thought took it so that I'd do charisma damage with it. Alright, well, I'm just going to do Eldritch Blast at it then. <laughs> So we got not eight dice. Uh, 
14 to hit. Does hit. Uh, 2d10. 9 plus 4. So 13 force damage. Excellent. Um, and then my tentacle to, because it is inside of that thing, it's going to attempt to grab his leg to prevent him from going any further. Okay. Um, I'm going to roll anything for that. To attempt to grab his leg. Um, with the grab tentacle it. check. Do strike be strength or something. Well, it's not my strength. It'd be the tentacle strength. Well, how are you figure that? Uh, do I just use my spell save DC as if it was strength? Yeah, let's do that. I'm just gonna try and save out of it. Okay. So, what's your spell save? Uh, 15. Oh yeah, I beat that. That is 16 plus. plus 16 plus four. So yeah, 20 on that. So okay. the ten tentacle comes out and tries to grab him, but he shoves his foot forward and uh, escapes the tentacle. Okay, uh, that's all. He did. Um, so it's the golem's turn. He is going to run forward and attack Panda. So to hit... Oh, sorry, Panda. He just rolled a nat 20 <laughs> plus seven, so 27 to hit. That misses. That misses it. It does. <laughs> sorry. Ouch. All right, so on a, on a crit, I'm just going to give him... I don't want to do anything stupid, so I'm just going to give him another D8. So that is... That's... Yeah. That ain't good. So he does 30 damage. God damn. 26 plus 4. <clears throat> no. Yoinks. I'm not feeling good. And he will let out a roar. Yeah, uh, we didn't make mayonnaise, man. We made water well, against my better judgment. <laughs> uh, all right, and it is the hag's turn. Uh, oh, so he has yeah. to roll what? <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Fun things. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, any creature that starts his turn in the air takes 2d6 cold. So let's start with that. You roll or I roll? Uh, if you want to, go ahead. Otherwise, I will. No problem. No, go for it. You can. All right, seven yeah. damage. Yikes, okay. Hey, guys, um, damage. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, she's Wrong she's time. blind and it's she's blind and it's difficult terrain. Okay. So um she will Yeah, she's uh, no. Hag isn't blind. Yeah, that was just uh other form. Poopoo -poo is blind. Um so she will try to escape out of this, not knowing which direction to go. She's you thinking it's the other way. Um, okay. So now, is there something it's difficult terrain? So she can move 15 feet. Ah, yes. <laughs> so she's still in it, right? Yeah. So, so now, 15 feet closer. Yeah. Uh, now you have to make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Uh, uh DC 16. Uh, five. Okay. <laughs> And you take seven acid damage uh, okay. as otherworldly tentacles start wrapping around your body. Ooh. So, let's do this. The hag runs towards you. You can hear her screaming as the pain of this hellhole is tearing into her. Uh, she actually makes it out of the shadow realm. Uh, as she does this, though, a acid green tentacle comes out wraps around and actually gores her throat out. 
Um, nice. And black rancid blood <laughs> spills out. And um, she lets out a guttural scream and is actually dragged in by her foot back into the blackness. And then it dissipates as well as her. <laughs> Gone. Denying Shabazz of a meal. <laughs> I, think our, I think our DM's sleepy. <laughs> Why am I sleepy? <laughs> Gideon just starts laughing evilly, and I cast True Resurrection on her. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm behind a fucking ham sandwich. I don't know. But, yeah. <laughs> You're still there's still a 500 pound flesh golem in front of you, so <laughs> feel free. That's more of a snack. You're eating a f you know giant bunny already, so <laughs> right, settle down. <laughs> Speaking of, is that flesh golem uh, still alive or? That flesh golem, oh, actually, uh, because his creator has been killed, uh, yes. goes limp. Yeah, nice. <clears throat> you did win. Very good. One is dead. Good. Is dead. I'm gonna check this out. There's a brain on the flesh the, golem. The bunny is dead. There is no brain on him. Okay. How about this bunny? Is there any brains? There is a brain in the bunny. Oh, I'm eating Adam. anymore. Adam's probably taking care of that. <laughs> he had first dibs. I don't mean eight, yeah. Uh, oh, probably yeah. all that's left is the horn. Oh, man. Um, well, it's not, it's not visible. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's tucked away. <laughs> <laughs> well, part of it is. Don't <laughs> king chain him. A small part of it is. Yeah. Um, all right, and so. string tied to it. After all that happens, um, Valandra actually, crack, shows up. Oof, right in oh, front of you. God. And she says, "That's cunt." Yeah. She says, um, "Well done, well done." Um, she casually strolls over to the um, hag's hut and pulls a bag, like a satchel, an Indiana Jones satchel, off the hook and opens it up. And you can hear like a like a hiss, kind of like a darkness from the bag. And she says. Um, I'll be taking these, and I'll be seeing you later. Uh, what is it? God, I fucking hate this woman. And um, so she says, before I go, I will tell you, uh, your next stop should be um, across the Ataz Bridge. Can she hear us? She, oh, she's yeah, right she's right there. Right there. Let her finish. Let her finish. Okay. Um, so she says, go to the, uh, across the Ataz Bridge, which is in the southwest. Um, you'll know you're there by the uh, howls of the laughing monkeys. Um, after that, you will be going to the wreck of the Star Goddess. <clears throat> uh, there you will find directions to the um, source of this curse. No, I'm go ahead, if you want to, before she pops up. So I'd like to, like, roll persuasion. Okay. With the roll the three. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? Because I got to roll, but I just want to say, like, you know, we're providing for you. What are you even giving to us? Why do we not just walk away right now? Why do we not just walk away right now? Because yeah. I fear not death. She says. That's up to you. I don't need you. I you could use you. Us. Nope. You I could use you. Us. I could help you get to where you're going. We have no desire to get to where we're going. Then you're on a fool's errand, and she pops away. Okay. <clears throat> Y'all want to go home? Yeah, you can. Death curse will still be. Let's go back to the city. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that red wizard's ready for you to come back. <laughs> no, like she's not like, giving us any incentive to like support her. Like there's a well, reason she's not like adding any kind of advantage to you. To you she just told us where we need to go. Listen, you need well, she you need her. We need to go, but I, like I don't feel like she's a good character or she has any like incentive to do this. Like I don't want to help her. No she. Reason. We're not she, doing it to help her, though. No. Yeah, we're doing it to help. She's helping you. We're doing to see. Yeah. You, you mean nothing to her. You're, all you are is just fodder. Obviously. Um, it's, it's you needing her. She's, she's basically... 
But she's not uh, helping us at all. Like, she didn't help us with this battle. She just told you where to go. She just told us exactly where we need to go. Okay. Right. Right, fair enough. Bitches be cray. Yeah. True story. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I don't I don't think you're gonna end up fighting. I wanna tell you what she is, but I don't want to fight don't a red wizard. Don't tell us that. Her. She's not a red wizard. Don't tell us she, that. Yeah. Well, she's, she's a bad. She, she presented herself as an adversary. Yes. Right. She like. She like. She's an emissary. Or adversary. Adversary. Okay. Like she rused us and lied to us. How'd she lie? When she lie? She told. She didn't lie once. No, she didn't lie at all. Nothing she said was a lie. When she took the amulet. Yeah. What was wrong with that? Yeah. I mean, I guess she gives the officers. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's been truthful the entire time. She's been straightforward with us. She's just. Right. She's looking at us like we're fucking playthings. We're on uh, strings. You're pawns. Yeah. yeah. And then we are. I mean, compared to the <laughs> red wizards. Most certainly are. We're not wrongs. Like otherwise, we'd be to... so like he doesn't Yeah, you're, you're, you're from royalty. You're not <laughs> I mean, used I don't to like that. like this mentality of like, you know, we're talking wrongs. down to you. Yeah. Like, I, like, as a noble, I don't feel like this is some place I want to be. You know what I mean? Like, okay. I don't like this manipulation. Yep. That's right. Just putting, just putting it out there. I'm grumpy. I'm grumpy <laughs> for this whole. Like... Do you guys want to explore the? I want to take a look at the witch's hut or the hag's hut. And, I agree. You know. mm-hmm. Yep, yep. yep. Let's do that. Okay, so um, what I will say is, you can certainly explore. Um, Gideon feels very good right now. He's he's fed the the deep. He yeah, dude, that was killed cool. a bunch of shit. That was very cool. Um, so you can see the hag, the hag's den is just a den. There's literally nothing there. The bag was the thing, um, and sh- and um, uh, Belandra grabbed that. Um, I'll let you know what was in there. That was the rest of those obsidian chunks. With well, I figured, so yeah. she got a tussle. Yeah. Um, and so you can explore what you'll notice is the, the tent area is that there is a cave with some water that looks like it goes down but it is underwater from what you can tell so you can explore that if you want um, it is very murky water you're going to have to have blind sight to see in it um, I, I can make it all crystal clear but yep, you can do that too. It's, all it is, it's just murky water sediment. Um, yep. So go ahead and, you know, like I said, explore if you wish. But um, Is her body still there? No, her body's gone. It was, I mean, I, I don't know Damn. how, just a second, I don't know how that deep stuff works. The way I flavored it is she basically got incinerated with the acid. Okay. Um, if, you, if there's remains, then sure. That, that's all, that's totally up to you. Um, yeah, I'll I'll say there are remains there, <laughs> but it's like. Um, let me roll for that real quick, just to. Can I roll against you? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, twenty versus twenty. Yeah, go ahead, because I just rolled great. Uh, well, that's fucking dumb. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. What'd you roll? I haven't rolled yet. I rolled a nine. I rolled a two. So, um, you can... <laughs> Perfect. Um, I will let you ingest whatever flesh is still on the bone there. Um, and you can learn how to make a iron golem. No, 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 uh, no you... I don't want to learn that. I want to learn what um, the disease is. Oh. Um, she... Yeah, she doesn't know. The hag doesn't know. Um, yeah, all she would know, yeah, because it's expensive to make. Um, I will say with the disease thing, all, all she knew was that this is big time necrotic necromancy curse. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah it's, I mean, it's kind of obvious stuff, but, uh, and that she knows that, um, it's kind of completely mute. Yeah. Sorry. Penis. Right there? 
Yeah, you're right. Oh, good. Oh, she's sorry. It's it's coming from the heart of the jungle. The curse. Okay. Well, oh, okay. I had to eat that to know that. She's just a hag that's killing people. She doesn't know what the fuck's going on. Hey, guys. On. She just said the heart of the jungle. So, the heart of the top. But we don't know where that is because we have no guide. We got the yeah, we do. flappy arm guy. Yeah, we do. We were just looking at it. Well, I don't know that. Um, I, I'm playing dumb because you were the one that ate her. I don't know that. Let's, let's, let's go like, I was magging the shit out of that. Another level? Yeah, man. Uh, P.S. Everybody go to hmm? what? Everybody go to seven. Right. Nice. Fuck yeah. So I want to roll, roll v roll, roll v roll with you. D twenty. Yeah. Be well. Yeah, we can roll. Roll versus well. Rolling, 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 rolling. <laughs> I want to roll v roll with you. Uh, D twenty. So that I could imbibe our dumb guide. <laughs> with the information that C hash had. <laughs> okay. And enable him to be a good guide. I don't know if that's even possible. No. Can I, I eat the hag and kiss the one armed dwarf? <laughs> I mean, you can certainly kiss him. I don't know what the fuck you're trying to. You're, you're trying to. I, what I what are you like, trying to. I don't want to move you... the information from the hag to the one armed dwarf. So he becomes a better guide for us. Why just what, tell what is he lacking in the guide department? I don't know. I know he's a bad guide. Why is he bad? Because, he told you because we had he told like you... we lost the best guide in the city, huh. right? I can't help but think that the best guide would be a little more interactive and like, hey, you guys probably don't need to do this. Not really guide. This guy isn't telling us shit. So this guy, <laughs> so, this guy, you have. Because Solid ate the brain of right, the right, Solid. Right, right, right. I want to undo that. Um, I want to make him better at his job by you eating, not... a, eating a hag and kissing a one-armed dwarf to transfer <laughs> the knowledge from the hag of the Central Forest into the dwarf. But you have to kiss him in a very specific spot I'll, to I'll, do that. I'll, I'll, oh, dude. Oh, oh, shit. <laughs> All right, so depending on how well you flourish this, I will give him an upgrade. Okay, you will give him an upgrade. Yep. That's all I'm asking. Okay. Would you like to roll for it? Nope, the floor is yours. All right. That's too much pressure. <laughs> you like you for begging for it. I yep. am begging for it. All right, so. I have before. Oh, I like the voice drop. All right. So. <laughs> Oh baby! I take the sea oh, hag. Yeah. I am going to my iron form. Boom! Stop. Go to my iron form. Uh, my hands become blades, and I separate a rib cage. I reach in. I um, retrieve her heart, and I slowly munch on it. And take it in. Yep. I then stand up seven feet tall above the one armed dwarf and remove the gem from my chest and throw it to the pig. Mm -hmm. As I do so, my torso flops over, end over end, like a ball, close to the mm -hmm. dwarf. Right? Mm -hmm. I have no arms and legs. Mm -hmm. I look up at the dwarf on my back and I say, Kiss me for enlightenment. Um, the dwarf is hesitant at first. Would you like to roll for it? Yeah, roll for persuasion. Okay. This is getting to a weird zone. Yeah. 17 net. It was weird when he was eating bodies. Alright. Lying flesh. What's your dwarf do? My dwarf reluctantly, but interested <laughs> uh comes down and, and plants on right on the air when he does so the black heart of the hag goes from my mouth into his 
so he will stumble oh, back. Was there was more than tongue. Uh, the, he'll stumble back, <clears throat> ch choke it down, and um, <laughs> he will get an all stat up. He has stats. He'll get an all stat up of plus one. And also, what you'll see is a little flutter <laughs> in his shirt sleeve. <laughs> and you see him go, what the fuck? And he quickly hurries his sleeve up, and he looks, and there's a baby arm there. <laughs> Sweet Jesus. And he looks at you, and he's like, what is this? Oh, my fucking God. And it's not his normal arm. No. <laughs> it, it, is, it is the baby version of the hag's arm, and it's growing out of his torso. <laughs> and he's like, what is this? And you say, you say, you and the hag are one. Hey, hold, and, hold up. Okay. Can, can that little tiny arm caress my face? Uh, <laughs> so, over to you. Come over to you. With this little baby arm. He'll actually help you back up into your pig mount. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so here, um, I'm going to say by next session, he'll have a functioning arm. Awesome. Uh, with um, not only... Um, the stat ups, but he'll also learn the spells that the hag had. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> that just I, gotta write, I gotta write that down because I'll forget. <laughs> I won't forget it. I, I won't forget it. I've every. This burning my forever. <laughs> forever. Oh my god. Every that was awesome. It's ingrained in my fucking skull now. So you picture the arm from Deadpool. Yeah, that's <laughs> basically that's okay, basically what he got. Yeah. That's my face. Yeah. So. Holy shit. Yeah, he gets a little hag arm, Good but uh, by next se by next session will sprout to a fully functional hag arm when he can cast spell the hag spells from that. Okay. So he can be invisible. He can get uh, vicious mockery and minor illusion. He can cast spells. Yeah. Ooh. That's that's part of his. He's a dwarf, right? Yep. You should just meta game. Make yep. the arm as long as what it was on the hag. Oh, it's, it's, the, it's, it's the hag's arm, <laughs> disproportionately. Compared to the other. Um, <laughs> it's like it's like thigh, no, like almost knee level. But I think this is, we're about to violate Twitch's terms of service. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so that's that. Um, everybody, everybody gets um, up to seven. Um, I will also say that. Um, Everybody can pillage what's there from the um, basically the loot of the campsite. Uh, so everybody will get an additional twenty-five gold. Um, and oh, there's one more thing. One second. <laughs> um, Death, were you going to go check out that water section? Yeah. Okay, so all that shenaniganry happens up top. Uh, you clear out the water and notice that 20 feet below the surface, um, there's a alcove uh, that you can enter if you wish. I I do wish. So you'll you'll enter and come up into a chamber that's filled with air. Mm. Uh, hanging from a stick there is a sack made from human skin. Uh, and, it, and it actually contains six onyx gemstones. <laughs> what um, you said there were what? gemstones, like the hag had gems. The hag had. Soul? Hag had. Um, what did I say? Brain's fuzzy now. Um, it wasn't onyx, was it? Yeah. Obsidian. Obsidian. Yeah. Obsidian, yeah. yeah. So um, these are six onyx gemstones. And um, there's also a spell of comprehend languages and 10 adamantine ingots stamped with dwarven runes. Uh, Hugh would probably recognize this. And um, these adamantine ingots can be forged into weapons that um, give you magical damage to your regular attacks. Nice. <laughs> that would help. Um, <clears throat> And I think that's all I want to give you. Yep, that's it. 
What about the, uh, the, the obsidian? That's all in death, though, right? The obsidian ones are special. Uh, those... Yeah, those are there, and then uh, who's got them? Um, the obsidian ones are gone. That's Valand the ones that... Valandra took them. Valandra took them. Oh, okay. okay. Those... So those are... The obsidian ones are special. Those are, like, basically high-capacity gemstones. Okay. Those are saved for the really strong right. souls. Yeah. Right, basically the one strongest out of every tribe that the hag's been to. Gotcha. Um, and she took those. Uh, the onyx crystal, the onyx gemstones can be vessels for souls, um, but they right now are just regular gemstones. Yeah. Um, they wouldn't be as high capacity as when I obsidian. emerge from the water. Um, the onyx gemstones are inside my robes. Okay. Um, and uh, I present yeah, to the party. Yeah, I'm just happy to see this. <laughs> uh, I <clears throat> present to the party the adamantine ingots and uh, the scroll that I found in the human skin sack. There's <laughs> 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 actually there's a couple little hairs on it. We'll mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> one patch. Okay. So you present the uh, adamantine ingots. Are these for purchase from you? Uh, I have no. I have no need of them. Uh, I'll take one. You may have all of them for all I care. Well, I'd like one at least. May I have one? Of course. I'll take one from um, Gideon. I bite it. It's not edible. <laughs> I throw it on the ground. <laughs> okay, well, I grab, I grab his. Well, I have two. Um, I'm taking. So I will let everybody have a shot at one before I just scrambling for them. Yeah, I just need one. So, all right, Amanda's taking one. Robot. All right, so let's say we all have one, and then we can fight for what four of them. There are six. There are what five people here? Five. So it's, uh, six, six of us. Six of us. So there'll be four up for grabs. And I don't want another one. I don't want one at all. I bite it. It's not edible. I throw it away. Okay, okay. so... That makes five up for grabs. So we could each take two, then, if everybody's yeah. agreeable to that. I'm agreeable okay. to that. Um, so do you want to show one of these to Hugh? Just board them? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, put, I did it in front of everyone, so Hugh can... Uh, so he will shuffle over with his... Freshly noodled arm, and um, he'll grab one and look at it, and he says, oh, "This is fine metal. Uh, this is actually dwarven metal. Uh, I know a thing or two about this. If I were to come across a smithing station, I I could actually turn this into fine weapons and armor." So he moonlights as a blacksmith. Perfect. Excellent. Uh, nice. Part of um, unlocking that plus one to his stats will be being able to craft magical items. Before he was just a regular smith, now he can actually craft magical items. Um, DM, in lieu of like me giving up the magical potential, can I learn something from the dwarf? What do you mean? Blacksmithing, crafting? Mm. For my class? You could like apprentice with him. Okay. Watch him or something. Uh, uh, you can't like, yeah. You could just like watch him do stuff. What's that do? He he could he could. I don't know. I, it takes a while to work magical items. I mean, it's not like something you can just. Hey, this is how you do but it. But I gave up the potential for a magical item to do so. So can I just watch him craft? And um. Some sort of like maybe. I don't know, like some kind of like crafting blacksmithy thing <laughs> add to my armor at some point? Um, I will let him add something to your armor. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So if you want to enhance your armor, you can do it with him. I, uh, I, like I take him on as like a, you know, like to be his apprentice to learn how to improve my armor at some point that you would yeah. decide yeah. what that is. I'll have to look all that up, but yeah. I telepathically tell Evolix and uh, Shavas that I also found six Onyx gemstones, and I don't think we should tell everyone else. Ooh, six, six don't make friends. Very good. 
six onyx gemstones. Mm. Oh yeah, don't tell anybody about those. Ooh, secrets. Secrets, secrets, secrets. <laughs> uh, what about the scroll? You want to do anything with that? Like I mean, if, we, if somebody want really wants a scroll of comprehend languages, then I will give it to them. But otherwise, I'll I will keep it. For it. Cool. George. Comprehend languages um, is a first level divination spell. Um, for the duration, you understand the literal meaning of any spoken language you hear. Also, understand any written language you see, but you must be touching the surface on which the words are written. Uh, it takes one minute to read one page of text. The spell doesn't decode secret messages in a text or a glyph, such as Cain's sigil, isn't part of a written language. <clears throat> I will roll for it unless, or I'll roll for it or take it, depending on whoever else wants it. Okay. I don't Same want one it. Yeah. Oh, going once, going twice. So. All right. And that's um, comprehend languages. You can learn that spell. Just learn it. Um, I don't have it take a spell slot or anything. Cool. It is still a spell, though. Like, if you're going to cast it, it will still be a, like an action to do so. Comprehend languages. All right. So, uh, next week, or whenever we want to do this, um, as Valandra said, you should be heading to the um, Ataz Bridge, which will bring you to the wreck of the Star Goddess. Um, that would be the right direction to go. Mm -hmm. if we don't go elsewhere if you don't trust it. Avalox has got a star boner. Star boner. Yeah. No, he he worships uh, Azathoth, which is one of the. Yeah, okay. Mhm. Mm the it's a star pack. Thing. Star boner. Nice. Star boner. Uh, like I said, feel free to follow that or path of fish. Um, we can Sweet. certainly do this next week if you guys want. Tell you. Cook up another couple of counters. This one actually went longer than I thought, so mm. I was afraid it wouldn't be long enough. Oh, don't worry. We can drag it out. We can take a long rest. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Thank you. All right. We got some That's sweet new spells at level seven, so. Cast? Yes, level seven for everybody. So we're going to level awesome. seven next week. I can now summon a fucking aberrant. Oh, God. Friend. Um, get those to me, the new spell. Not, I'm not super. But you just broke out no bad. This is a get them to me if you can. Cancel. If you yep. cannot, I'm not I super worried about it. Well, so. I will post something this week, maybe tomorrow. Okay. Or today, however that works.